Hey, strangers. Welcome to another episode of The Strange Sessions. I am Krista, and with me is my quirky co-host, <laughs> Crazy Kurt. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I've been described as quirky. I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, me too. I think quirky is a good... It's uh, a good word. ...trait to have. It is. How how you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. I'm trying to think of something. I can't it, think of anything. It's raining. It is raining. The birds are chirping really loud outside yeah. our window. Yeah. It's our second morning recording, so we got to get used to the birds. It's only like 60 degrees here. I was in Kansas last week, and it was like 94 and humid, so Yuck. I was so happy to come home to like 60 and breezy. Yuck. Yeah, I couldn't handle it. No. I'm trying to think if I have anything new, but I don't. Things have been going in there. I know I've posted on a, in the Strangers group about that Mushroom Land TV YouTube mm-hmm. thing, and I've gotten like unhealthily obsessed <laughs> with that. Oh, no. I downloaded the soundtrack. Oh, that's funny. I watch them all the time. And I'm, I, the thing is, it's like this weird Polish video series of like six videos that it's made to look like a children's show. But the girl that hosted Agatha has paper cutouts of eyes taped on her eyes. And it's really, really bizarre. And it's like like a David Lynch kind of thing. But where David Lynch stuff freaks me out, this doesn't... Like, I'm obsessed with this thing. Like, I want to order shirts. And when it was going on, it was a mystery about, you know, is this real? What is this? But when the last episode... When they had like the names of the actresses and stuff in okay. there, and they they know now that it was it was put out by a guy named Victor Streberg, I think. Okay. But the big mystery is like what it all means, like what is you know what's going on in there. So some, this is old. It's not. It's something like five that's years on now. old. Okay. It's like five years old. Yeah. Some people think the girl is dead and that she's going through the stages of grief. Some people think there was a nuclear war because there's like like hints in there about a nuclear war and there's it's just really weird so if you want to check out some weird youtube videos it is mushroom land tv and there's only six the, videos yeah but I no there's like a bunch of like little mini videos like oh, this okay. weird cartoon that's like looks like a 70s scooby-doo cartoon that you watch and you're nice. like what but the main if you go to the main i can't think of the name of it now but the main youtube page that they were on they're subtitled in english which makes it a lot easier oh. Yeah, but they're they don't make sense. They're weird, and there's something going on, but nobody can think of what it is. So I'm just I've been obsessed with those. So you watching episodes over and over again? Yeah. Or you, yes. Okay. And I got the soundtrack. Like it's weird, like '80s synth <laughs> soundtrack that would. It be, sounded like Twin Peaks. Yeah, when it you would played be, it. For it me. sounded like music for Stranger Things. It's like '80s yeah. like synth, and I downloaded the soundtrack, so I've been listening to that in my car all the time, and I've dreamt about it. So I'm like, <laughs> I went down that rabbit hole, really, really. It's good music for a day like today. It is, because it is gloomy. Speaking of Stranger Things, epi- or season three comes out July 4th. Really? Yes. I just re-signed up for my Netflix, so nice. that will be good. Yeah. But other than that, I haven't done much anything. Yeah, me neither. No, life's been blown. I'm just happy to be back home. I don't like traveling for work. No. Living out of a hotel room is not my idea of a good time. No, that sounds... <laughs> Especially for work. Yeah, for work. But you did if do some, you did do some husband, cool things. Like you went to that haunted hotel. I did. Hotel. We went to a haunted hotel. Um, I'm not going to say where we were or the name of it because the owner um, has had a lot of problems. A, they, they're they actually having a really hard time getting people to stay there. Um, I think they should actually advertise it as a haunted hotel. Yeah. Yep. But that also brings in... I'm, let's let's admit some weird people. Yes, <laughs> they've had people bring me quirky. Ju- yeah, like not not not, a, not really good quirky. They have had investigation groups come in there, and unfortunately, one group brought a Ouija board in there. Oh um, so she's just kind of leery. Um, totally don't blame her. My coworker and listener of the show, Sherry, and I did a tour, and she recorded with her phone and thought she caught an EVP. But Kurt and I, that you know. The seasoned investigators that we are kind of poo pooed. We, are, we, we are well seasoned. <laughs> yeah, we're a little salty. Yeah, um, <laughs> sometimes. It, 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 it's interesting. We both hear what Sherry is hearing, but we can't rule out that it was. There was a whole three people in the room. We were all talking at the same time, so there's. Just, no, I thought the voice sounded like the same, like a match to the voice of somebody else that was speaking. Yeah. So yeah. So sorry, Sherry. Sorry, <laughs> but we'll bring you. I told her she should come here to the school and we could do an investigation. Yeah. Where there's, you know, we because yeah. we weren't really investigating. We were touring and we were talking and not being mindful of like calling like things EVP out questions, and right? Stuff, yeah. and, or or even if somebody you know sniffled or 
their stomach growled. Nobody was calling those things yeah. out. Yeah. And I just feel like it's too hard to try to pull out an EVP. Yeah, totally agree. But I don't want that to turn her off from the experience. So no. she should come here and we could do an investigation when it's yep. quiet. Yeah, that would be cool. And intentional. Yeah, totally agree. But, but it was a, one little, you know, moment of fun in my otherwise boring uh, work trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got shout outs. Sweet. Got a list of them today. So a lot so of people. So new, new strangers? Yes. Okay. These are new strangers who joined our Facebook group, The Strangers, and they are Matthew Alexander Zweig, Danielle DeMarsico, Mike Dresson, or Dresson, not sure, Vincent Gabriel Russo, who is our 200th stranger. Yay! So thank you so much, Vincent. Send me your address and stuff, and we will send you out some stickers if you would like them. Um, Caroline Spivey Bro, Michael Wafford, and just as we were setting up, we got a request to join the group from Thea Sircelli, okay, who said she had to answer the questions like what we say at the end of the episodes, <laughs> and she said she usually falls asleep by the end of the episode. <laughs> but my friend Carly that listens to the podcast said the same thing that said that she'll fall asleep. Appreciate your honesty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> she, like Carly said it's not that we're boring. It's just that Good. it's like relaxing to oh, listen to we us. We soothe people to yeah, sleep. Yeah, so I guess we're, or we're boring. One of the two. Okay. Well, Whatever. At least we got another side gig if yeah, we want it. That's true. Putting people to sleep exactly. with our conversation. <laughs> and I want to give a special shout out to Megan Jade Soul, who wrote a really nice recommendation recommendation for us and said that she likes that we're not a true crime podcast although we do talk about and then tonight's crimes. episode ends up being a little true crimey <laughs> so totally. we're sorry about that at least our but, true crime stuff is usually has a weird yeah there's usually like a it. mystery involved or something yeah. unknown it's not just someone murdered it's not just somebody this guy murdered this person right and what a jerk you know, so no, this is... I mean, not that I don't like those stories, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, but there are a lot of true crime podcasts. There are a ton of true yes. crime podcasts, yes. Uh, do you have any shout outs? Anything? No. Okay. Uh, housekeeping. Do you have any housekeeping? Because I have stuff. Go for it. We are coming up on our 50th episode. Woo-hoo. This is our 48th episode. So wow. two episodes from now, our big 5-0. That is crazy. It is crazy. Because I remember you and I talking about that when we started doing this. And it was, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago, it but it was ago. quite a while ago that we started doing this. Wow. So for that episode it's going to be a personal stories episode yep for that episode everyone who sends us a personal story or sends us a congrats on 50 episodes message to our email sends us an audio recording sends it in a facebook or text message or calls our phone line will get their name put into my random phone app thingy and at the end of the episode (laughs) a name will be picked and that person will win some strange session stickers a personally signed copy of show notes that Krista and I used in an episode, and a $50 gift card or just $50, whichever you want. Not both. One. You're like going to put a $50 bill in a... Yeah, well, I've done it before. Why not? Oh. But I mean, you people usually want a gift card. But Amazon. I, yeah, I but like I don't Amazon know if it might be it. somebody from out of the country. Oh. You know, yeah, so... but Amazon works everywhere. I would not send cash. Okay, just let us just know what, let us know what gift card you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you really want cash, let me know. <laughs> I'll, I'll take I'll take that risk. <laughs> and people have asked about how long they have on the phone line to record a conversation. Yeah, that's a good and question. I looked into it and it is three minutes. Ooh, which talk is fast. not long. Talk fast. So if you do have a story you want to send to us, because we really want paranormal stories from you guys. So if you have a story you want to send to us, it's better to do a voice recording using the app on your phone and send us the mp3 or file you could call and leave a couple messages they're mp3s i can weave yeah, i can weave them yeah. together and krista app, can work her magic so. on those it's just cutting and pasting people <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, if you want to no matter how you want to get to us but if you send us a personal story or a really nice congrats on your if your name put into the drawing for the prize yeah sweet. so that's that do you want to let them pick what show notes they want do we have all of we the don't show have notes? we have i have all the show notes but if they want one that we actually used on the air that I scribbled stuff out and was yeah, like yeah, editing yeah. stuff out, I'll just give them one at random. Yeah, it'll just be random. Then. But yeah, if you really want one of the show notes, let us know. Krista and I will both sign it. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to be worth money anytime <laughs> soon, but hey, it's <laughs> we'll something put, We'll maybe write cool. a little note on it yeah, too. Yeah, it's something kind of cool to have. Yeah. So I think that's really all I have. Sweet. So yeah, now we are hitting you guys up for paranormal stories or just messages congratulating us, telling us what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show. Yeah, we want all messages about what you don't like. Yeah, do that. (laughs) 
<laughs> hey, the sun is shining. I'm it just is. It actually say that just right got now. actually just got nice I outside. Can't even believe it. It'll be storming again when we leave. <laughs> Probably. So that's really all we have for housekeeping. Okay. I think. Cool. Are we doing a taste test? Now? We are doing a taste test, and I literally have no idea what this is. This was sent to me by our listener and stranger Shane, who I know in real life, and he sent like a. It's a big box. A mysterious set of instructions on what we're supposed to do. I won't take a picture of it and post it with his address on it like I did with For Dash. Dash. Yeah, sorry, Dash. Oh, my God. Now that he's getting all sorts of stalkers. And I'm, and... So, like, I'm so private about that yeah, sort of thing. But I saw the picture, and I didn't even realize nope. that his deets were on there. Like, if I put my address online, I'd yeah. freak out. So. You, wanna, you do the Sorry, address. Dash. Oh, you always make me open stuff. You're the show okay. open person. I like his, um, was he in the military? Shane? Yeah. I believe he was. Because the, do you see his return address has like a He loves military airplanes. Plane? He goes to EAA oh, all the time. Nice. That's a big fly-in thing here in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's a big deal. Someone always very, crashes every there's year. There's like celebrities there all the time. That's sad to say, but there is a plane crash every single yeah. year. But I know they have tons of celebrities. I can't think of who was just there. Was it Bruce Willis? I don't know. Somebody was there. They might ask Chris and I to do an appearance, but oh we'll yeah, see. for sure. Because what we talk about is super relevant. <laughs> we'll talk about people that died in airplane crashes. We have talked about airplane stuff. Talk about the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the the Malaysia airline yep. that went down and they still have no idea where that thing is. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm just rip. It's like a Christmas present at this point. I'm just tearing it apart. Oh, oh there's oh, another it's box like inside a of it. Grocery bag. It's another box inside. Oh, it's of a it. Woodman's bag. That's exciting. Ooh. A box inside a bag. It's like a Russian nesting doll. Ooh. It's not leaking. That's good. Yeah, I literally have no idea from his instructions what this it's is. very cryptic. We're supposed to eat something whole. whole and then we're just, supposed to let him know what we think of the beverage. He says that we can't assume we know how to eat it. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know what that means. I feel like I'm scared food usually a little doesn't bit. I'm require a bit instructions. Oh, there's bubble wrap. Well, he said there was a beverage in here, so that would explain the bubble wrap. Wow. This is intense. I'm making a huge mess. Oh. Luxury cream fudge. I mean, how bad could that be? I don't know. It's all of it, though. Mogu Mogu. Gotta chew. It's some kind of beverage. Okay. What's going on here? Okay. <laughs> Chris is kind of overwhelmed. Whoa. Jalap Mexican jalapeno M&Ms. Oh, boy. I didn't know that was a thing. I'm kind of sad it is a thing. <laughs> Uncle Bud's deep fried peanuts. Can you eat peanuts? Oh, yeah. I okay. peanuts. I'm never sure about what you're allergic Pecans, to. Pecans, Brazil I do have it saved hazelnuts. on my phone, though. Okay. What you're allergic to, along with the Chinese uh, characters that go with it. Just in case. Yes. Okay, what do you want, what are we doing here? I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. End with this one. <laughs> yes, that'll be dessert. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can I take pictures of everything before I pass it to you? This is craziness. Where did he find all this? I weird have no stuff? idea. Uncle Bud's deep fried peanuts. Okay. I'm gonna take this out of the bag. This clearly looks maybe the mogu mogu. So we have a listener. I it can't says, think of... just make sure you eat one product per the instructions on the package. You okay. might assume you know how to eat them based on past experience. Based Are there any instructions on any of those packages? Okay, we'll look. Deep fried peanuts have to be good. I mean, there's no way they could be bad. But I said that about that pepperoni pizza thing that hurt my mouth. It harshed your mellow. It totally harshed my mellow. <sighs> okay. There's no instructions on... Eat them shell and all. Okay. Oh. It's... Yeah. Okay, true story. I eat peanuts with a shawl on so all the I. time. So do I. I. So, yeah, so okay. not, I think that's what he meant is that people... Shell their peanuts. Yeah, I have never shelled my peanuts. I mean, I do I sometimes. I do, yeah. But yeah, I, but I love the shell, actually, which people think is really weird, but give it a try, guys. Yeah, It's but, actually really good. That must be it. And this Because <laughs> there's no instructions here. This might be too much information for people, but if you do eat peanuts in the shell, they're very chew fibrous. Them, chew them very well, <laughs> or the next day it's like pooping out steel wool. Oh wow! Well. We're just gonna say that. Okay. Steel wool. Okay. What? What are we? Are we doing all this today? Yeah. Why not? Okay. So, what do you want to start with? The peanuts. The peanuts. Okay. No, let's do the the jalapeno M and M's because okay. that scares get the, me. That frightens get the, me. Yeah. 
I hate jalapeno peppers. I might peppers. need to bring one or two of these home for my husband. You bring them he all home for your husband. Okay. I don't want that filth. <laughs> you might <laughs> I love hate, it. I hate jalapeno peppers. Okay, I'm, I'm smelling it. Mm, I like jalapeno. They just look like normal M and M's. I'm s- gonna do two of them. Do you think there's peanuts in the middle? Yeah. Not jalapenos. There better not be a pepper in the middle. <laughs> okay, ready? Ready? Go. I'm not getting any jalapeno pepper Mm-mm. flavor. Nope. Hmm. I'm waiting for the heat. I am too. I'm gonna have another one. Oh, I. I have just a tiny bit of heat. There's, You're making a face, though. There's a little bit of heat, like in the back of my throat. Mm-hmm. That's where the heat is, in the back of your throat. But it doesn't taste... There's no jalapeno flavor. No. But yeah, I don't like those. Ugh. I, don't, mm. I, don't. I actually love oh. um, chocolate with spice in it. Uh, no. It is a very Mexican thing. Uh. Mm. I love it. My husband's going to love Ugh. these. No, I don't like that. See, like with Dash's hot sauce, it burned... My the mouth, front of your tongue. it burned the front of my tongue. Mm-hmm. This burns in the back of my throat, and that's, mm-hmm. I don't like, uh, no. I give that a I'm two. Gi- I'm giving them an eight. Wow. Wash it down with some water. Well, we should have washed it down with the mogu mogu. <laughs> mogu it's mogu. lichee juice. Oh, lychee is good. With nada de coco. <laughs> okay, let's it's do this. It's pink. <laughs> let's do the peanuts. Peanuts? Okay. I'm going to try not to spill these all over the place. I never place. knew that you eat peanuts in a shell, too. I know mm-hmm. my brother does. Corey does. But not many people do. Okay, if I grab... eat them at work in the shell, people give me, like, the funniest look. It, Yeah, it can be weird if, I mean, I'm going to grab three of them. They are very salty. I'm going to smell it. Smells like a peanut. I mean, they're fried. How bad could that yeah. be? Yeah. You ready? Ready? Go. Mmm. Mmm. It actually makes the shell more tender, it but does. they're still crispy. They're not as hard to chew. That's really good. Mm-hmm. I expected more of a like a deep fried flavor. Mm-hmm. Like an oily flavor. But I. These are I good. think you're right. I think that what the deep frying does is it makes the shell more chewable. Mm-hmm. Mm. I really like those. Me too. Okay, you can take those home. I will. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Shane, those are good. Yeah. Really good. They don't taste any different than a peanut. No. It's just they're softer. The shell, It makes the shell more edible. Mm. Yummy. Mm. I'm thirsty. You want to try this beverage yeah. now? I am going to give that a... Mm. I'm going to give that a 10, just because I love peanuts, Mm -hmm. and this made them even more Mm -hmm. enjoyable, so I'm going to give it a 10. I'm giving it a 10, too, because salty, crunchy is like my favorite type of snack. That is really good. And I love nuts. Yeah. (laughs) I knew you were going to snicker when I said that. Anyway, (laughs) so now we're going to try the drink? Yeah. Okay, I'll go get some cups. cups? Okay. I'm going to struggle to get it open. Sorry. Watch out for the squeaky, guys. Mm. Oh, boy. Here we go, trying to open this bottle. Okay. Oh, wow. That smells really strong. Like strong? Like just really. There's chunks in there. <laughs> Are there supposed to be chunks? I don't know. That was bizarre. Um. Okay. <laughs> I grunt at least. Oh, sorry. This thing is really squeaky today. I think it's like chunks of some kind of fruit. It's probably lychee. Interesting. Okay. Well. Ready? I'm ready. I'm taking a sip. It, wow. It's. Do you smell it? It is really strong. Oh, wow. It tastes like lavender. I think that tastes a lot like mm. lavender. Mm. It does taste like, like floral. lavender. It tastes floral. Mm. It's. Oh, wow. It's, it's like really, really good. It's really good. It has like a. It's like. <laughs> Sort. I don't want to say. I'm not saying this in a bad way, but it has like a slimy mouthfeel, but in a good way. Yeah. Does that make it, sense? It tastes like a really. It tastes like a floral flavored drink mm. with fruit cocktail mixed mm. into it. Because yeah, like the chunks like, of fruit are. It's really good. You're right about the lavender, and lavender is like my favorite thing in yeah. the world. So, it does. I wouldn't say it smells like lavender, but I really taste that. I really like this. Yeah. 
You're not it's, kidding about the slimy mouthfeel, though. It's, it's it chewy does. and liquidy. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, mm. this is a texture that I would not like no, in but a it's, drink because it it's really slimy. Reason. Yeah. I mean, you probably could just swallow this, but I have to chew it. I chew mm. ice cream, so. Weirdo. I know. Well, I prefer ice cream that has like chocolate and almonds and stuff in it. I prefer my ice cream melted. Mm. I'll get a blizzard from Dairy Queen and I'll let it sit in my cupboard for an hour until it's like drinking the shake. Wow. Yeah, so you could I'm, just order a shake. You could, but <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't be quirky, Kurt. I wouldn't be quirky, Kurt. <laughs> well, this is definitely interesting. Uh, it's really good. It tastes really artificial, though. You know what I mean? I don't think so. I don't think it does. The color's so unnatural. The I mean, it's like <laughs> it looks like grapefruit juice. <laughs> it's a little pinker than grapefruit juice. I like this a lot. Mm, it's good. I'm gonna give it. A seven. I'm going to give this another 10 wow. because I really like this. Florally is a really good way to describe it. And chewy. <laughs> with, what, with like fruit cocktail inside yeah. of it. it. It's sort of like they emptied one of those little fruit cocktail cups into <laughs> it's exactly, a bottle. It's exactly what it's like. Wow. That was really good. Mm-hmm. I can't get enough of these peanuts. Those are good too. Okay. One more. Luxury cream fudge. I'm taking two pieces. I'll take just give me one. I'm gonna throw it. Okay. Good catch. I'm gonna oh it has a little cow on it and it's cute. I'm gonna take a picture of that. See right away the cow made me think of that uh, mushroom land TV video. So oh, really? I know I've been watching that too much. Is there a cow in it? Yeah. At least? A lot of cows. Okay. <clears throat> wow, I didn't know we were going to be tasting so much today. This is like a breakfast. I know, right? Ooh, yummy. It looks good. It looks like caramel. The only clunker so far was the nasty jalapeno. Mm, and I love them. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Ready. Oh. Mm. Okay. The texture is totally different than I thought it was going to be. Because it looks like a caramel, so you mm-hmm. think it's going to be chewy, but it just kind of it... falls apart in your mm-hmm. mouth. But... Mm, that's good. Well, fudge is sort of like that. You yeah. know what I mean? It looks like caramel, but it has the texture of fudge. But I think it has the flavor of caramel. It does. That's really good, too. That's interesting. Mm. All right, I'm having one more. I'm hitting my sugar quota for <laughs> the day already. I'm going to give this. That's eight. What are you going to give this? I'm going to give this a seven, too. I'm going to give this an eight. Okay. It's very good. Hmm. I think the texture throws me just a little bit. The texture is a little different. I really expect it to be like a caramel. Yeah. But it's a fudge. Yeah. No, I mean, it's not bad, but it's really good. He's going for more peanuts. I like these peanuts. They are good. Wow, this is more sugar than I've had in one sitting in a while. (laughs) Are you going to be all bouncing off the wall? Probably. And then I'm going to get super depressed and I'm going to crash. Oh, I'll give you a hug. (laughs) (laughs) You made a mess of our table. Mm. Mm. That was good. Thank that you so good. much, Shane. These have a really good aftertaste. I don't know. I'm all about these peanuts. <laughs> You've got the aftertaste of peanut in your mouth. I do. Oh, that was good. Thank you so much, Shane. Wow. We're spoiled. We are spoiled. You can take the fudge home. You, you can, can take leave it. them here for a snack. Yeah, leave Those them here. Those aren't going to go bad or anything. Nope, leave them here. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Shane. That was four things. I don't think we've ever tasted four products in one episode. No, we haven't. I just want to grab my nuts one last time. (laughs) Your salty nuts. (laughs) My salty nuts. (laughs) Oh my God, I love these. Yeah, those are good. I see some that are just shell. There's no peanuts in them. You got to still eat those. Mm -hmm. I see a couple that look burnt. Those always taste a little Mm -hmm. funky. They do. Like like that one ratty pistachio oh. that's always in the bottom of the bag. That was really good. Mm. Okay. We're done crunching in your Let ears. Let me get myself adjusted here. I'm actually full from all this. I know. I had breakfast. I did too. McDonald's. This is second breakfast. Are we going to have 11 Z's too? Is, uh, we're going to have 11 Z's. <laughs> 11 Z's. Are you ready? I'm ready. Tonight's episode is... Tonight? A- <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> totally threw me you off there. Yeah, you just were like, tonight's episode, it's 8.42 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode, this morning's episode? This morning's episode. I don't know. I suppose Today's it all depends on... Because yeah. the whole day is today. Yeah. And who knows when they're listening. They could listen at 10 o'clock at night, for yeah. all I know. You guys can listen whenever you want. It's okay. <laughs> oh, my tongue kind of hurts from the salt. Uh, okay. Today's story is about the disappearance and death of Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon. Okay. This is one that a lot of you probably are familiar with. Because I don't know the names, but I think w- I do once you know saw the, story. the pictures, because Krista mm-hmm. said she didn't know who I was talking about, and then once she saw the pictures, she's like, "Oh, I remember this." Yes, Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon. Okay. Uh, I actually was kind of following this one from the very start. Okay, and I will admit my shallowness again that it was because I saw their picture and I'm like, "Oh, those oh, girls are cute. hot." <laughs> yeah, so that's that's sorry, that's just <laughs> how I roll. <laughs> And uh, Perky Kurt. Uh, so I've been following this since like day one almost. And it's just, this is one of those ones that kind of has stuck with me. Because it's a relatively new story no, yeah, too, right? No matter what happened, <clears throat> it's sad all the way mm-hmm. around. I mean, there's no good, uh, whichever theory is correct, none of them are good. And okay. it's just depressing and sad. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to depress the crap out of you. Yes. So... There are a lot of conflicting or factually iffy facts about this case, and a lot of that comes from the fact that a lot of the reports were translated from Spanish to Dutch to English, so it's like a game of telephone. Okay. And truthfully, a lot of it is because basically Krista's dog, my cat, and the donkey that lives outside her studio could have teamed up and done a better (laughs) investigation than the one that was actually done. Wow. Because it was Hmm. bad. Okay. Very bad. So there's a lot of... You know, there's just so many conflicting stories and a lot of facts. So this is going to be super frustrating hearing how the investigation went. There wasn't much of an investigation. That's Ugh. that's that's okay. the problem. So what could be a probably a solvable case isn't because the work wasn't done. Probably. Ugh, yeah. It's frustrating. But there's a lot of stuff in this case that doesn't make sense that you don't you can't really get a grasp on what exactly happened. Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon grew up in Amersfoort, a city in the province of Utrecht, Netherlands. Lizanne was 22 and was described as aspiring, optimistic, intelligent, and a passionate volleyball player. And Chris was 21 and was described as open, creative, and very responsible. Lizanne had just graduated college, earning her degree in applied sciences from Deventer, and Chris had just completed her studies in cultural social education, specializing in art education at the University of Utrecht. Lizanne had just moved into a dorm room with Chris in Amersfoort, and the two friends worked together at a cafe restaurant called In Den Kleinenhap, and I actually tried to to find a uh, translation Translation? for that, and I couldn't, so I don't know what that means. The money the two girls got from their job, they started putting aside for a trip to Panama. After saving money and planning the trip for six months, the two girls set off on their trip to Panama. The trip was part reward to Lizanne for graduating and the opportunity for Chris to use what she had learned and to do something of significance for the locals, such as volunteering to work with the children and teaching them arts and crafts. In Holland, they gathered money from friends and family to buy children's toys for the Panamanian kids they would teach. They both also saw the trip as a great opportunity to learn Spanish. Hmm. So just two young friends. uh, Want to help people. Yeah, wanting to help people planning a trip to Panama. On March 15th, 2014, Kremers and Froon arrived in Panama for their six-week vacation, which they ended up extending. They toured Panama. From what I read... uh, they got there when they were supposed to, and they went to the school that they were supposed to volunteer at, and the lady that ran the school said, no, you're not going to... Like, something got screwed up. I'm not sure if it was... Paperwork or visas Paperwork, or, or something. that they weren't going to end up there, or mm-hmm. that they were supposed to start a week later. Than okay. they, so they had all this time to kill, basically, when they got to town. So they decided to tour Panama and spend time hiking around the Panamanian jungle for two weeks before arriving in the town of Boquette on March 29th to live with their host family for a month while volunteering with local children. I believe the town is Boquette. Okay. Some people have said Boquet. I'm going to mm. go with Boquette. It's a pronunciation yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm going to go with Boquette. 
When they arrived in Boquette on March 29th, a city close to the western border of the country with around 19,000 inhabitants, it turned out that their appointments had changed. Staff of the school told them that they could not work there after all and that they would help them find another school to volunteer at, but it would take a week. So that's what happened. Okay. But other people, other things I read said that they were, they got there early and were going to teach at the same school, so that's part mm. of the whole... Nobody's really sure. All that everybody knows is that they ended up not being able to teach that first week they got there. Okay. So they had nothing to do. On April 1st, 2014, a taxi is said to have picked the girls up and brought them to the start of the El Pianista Trail, which is Spanish for piano. Because if you look at a picture of the trail, it's a long, straight, looks like a piano keyboard. Okay. So that's why it is called the El Pianista Trail. All right. They left in very good weather with their host family's dog, Blue, around 11 o'clock a.m. near the clouded forests that surround the Baru volcano not far from Boquet. Did something happen to Blue? No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) As soon as I said Blue, you you look so sad over there. And I was like, what's going on? Tell me the dog's okay. No, the dog is okay. Okay, thank you. Um, They're not, but the dog is okay. The dog's okay. (laughs) Um. So by all accounts, it was like a really nice day. It was okay. warm. It was like, I want to say 90 degrees, Ugh. our temperature. But and probably humid as yeah, all get up yeah, in Panama. Prob- oh probably. my gosh. But still, Mosquitoes that's what it's the like Mosquitoes the size of small planes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So weather wasn't an issue. No. I was looking up stuff on the El Pianista Trail online, and one person that went there on their blog said, quote, El Pianista Trail fast became my favorite jungle adventure in Boquette with its narrow canyon-esque path. The trail is just four kilometers out of Boquette town and is three to four hours out and back trail with more than 2,000 feet of elevation. The trail leads you to a cloud forest, which essentially means at least half of the trail is inside the clouds. That's so cool. This turns the scenery into a dripping rainforest where life is buzzing, water droplets are falling to the floor from every leaf, and wildflowers and birds are plentiful. Sounds awesome. It sounds really pretty. It sounds really nice. So, I mean, it's a short trail. They said three to four hours in and back. So, a lot of people use this trail. It's a very common trail. The two girls wrote on Facebook that they intended to spend the day walking around Boquette and sent a text message to a friend, and it was reported that they had possibly been seen having brunch with two young Dutch men before embarking on the trail. Possibly. Possibly. (laughs) And that's another... Okay. That's another... So it may or may not have happened. May or may not have happened. A lot of people say it did happen, that, that they were seen having lunch. They were having lunch at a place together, and it turned out two other guys that were there were... Dutch. Okay. Just like the girls were. So they naturally that would make started sense. talking. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the girls set out on the trail. The evening of April 1st, 2014, the family's dog returned home, but without Chris or Lizanne. The family searched the immediate area surrounding their home, but found no sign of the girls. Giving them the benefit of the doubt, the host family decided they would wait until morning and continue their search. Ugh. Chris and Lizanne had scheduled a private walking tour of Boquette and the trail for the following morning with a local guide, but they never showed up for their appointment. It was then that the tour guide and the host family contacted the authorities. The next morning, the authorities conducted an aerial search of the forest as well as a foot search with the help of local residents. And from what I heard from some podcasts I listened to about this or some sites is that it wasn't a huge search party it was a couple volunteers from town so it wasn't a ton of people wow. because it's it, they don't have like a big military presence or anything you know i mean it's a relatively small town yeah. 19,000 inhabitants <laughs> so they it was just a group of people going out looking for them okay in what sounds like a pretty vast dense yeah forest yeah but the girls had booked a tour the following day with a tour guide but that's one of the mysteries is why did they decide to do that themselves the day before they were going to go with the well, tour guide. I'm sure that, oh, was the tour guide going to take them on that same trail? Yes. Oh, that is weird. Yep. We'll get to that, though. Okay. The families of both Chris and Lizanne hadn't heard from them since April 1st. The two girls had texted their parents every day, so their family started to become alarmed that they stopped hearing from them. When they still hadn't heard anything by April 6th, the girls' parents boarded a plane along with detectives from the Netherlands. Together, police, dog units, and the Netherlands detectives searched the forest for a full 10 days. The girls' parents offered a reward of $30,000, but this didn't bring them any new information. Hmm. 
After 10 weeks and no sign of the girls, police began to slow their search efforts. But it was then that a Nagobi woman came forward. The Nagobi are a local indigenous tribe in the area. The woman brought in a blue backpack that she said she had found in a rice paddy by a riverbank near her village in the Boca del Toro region. In a rice paddy? Yeah. Yeah, they had they, there's a rice paddy with a river next to it and It's a rice paddy. It's where you grow Okay. rice. Gotcha. And uh, a lot of times it would get really hot when they were out gathering the rice and stuff and they would bathe in the local river to cool off and okay. that was that that's what they were doing when one of the women spotted something and they went and looked and it was a blue backpack. Okay. She said that she was sure the backpack had not been there the day before. The backpack was identified as belonging to Lizanne Froon. The backpack contained two pairs of sunglasses, $83 in cash, Froon's passport, a water bottle, Froon's camera, two bras, and the women's phones, all packed, dry, and in good condition. The phones and the camera would soon become the focal point of the case, but we will get to that How shortly. How far off the... So there must have been a trail they were following, right? Was this like really far off the trail? It was like trail? 12 miles off <laughs> where the, the trail where they were last believed to have but been. was it next to the like next to a trail no it, it so sounds this was it, like i don't know they would it have sounded like it, it sounded like it was just it didn't sound like it was close to a trail it was okay. close to the rice paddy where these people were working but i don't think it was near a trail in the jungle okay because of the discovery of the backpack but wait it was 12 miles from like the trailhead 12 miles from where they think the girls had last been seen, seen? okay yeah or wow. where the girls That's last really were far. known to have been yeah. it is very far because of the discovery of the backpack, searchers went to the area where the backpack had been found. They then discovered Chris Kramer's jean shorts a few kilometers away from where Froon's backpack had been discovered. Now, there's another. this is another place where there's some confusion because some people say that the jean shorts were found zipped and neatly folded sitting on top of a rock in a, uh, by the bank of a river. Like she took them off. Like she took them off and set it there. But other people say that the jeans were not folded and they were just found in the river itself floating. Hmm. Well, that's two wildly different things. Yeah, exactly. And that's why nobody can get a, a hmm. handle on which of these is accurate. Either they were taken off of her or she took them off. Is yeah. what those yeah. two things tell me. There, There's one blog I went to that lays all of this out really good. And okay. this girl that writes this blog researched everything. So I'm going to put links to that okay. in both the Strangers and on the Strange Sessions page because it was really good. So they still don't know. Her shorts were found. Her jean shorts were found. But there's confusion as to how they okay. were found. Which is kind of an important detail. Exactly. <laughs> Two months later, in an area near where the backpack was discovered, a human pelvis and a boot with a foot still inside of it were found. Oh, God. Soon, at least 33 widely scattered bones were discovered along the same riverbank. DNA testing confirmed that the bones had definitely belonged to Froon and Kremers. Why would they be scattered like that? Froon's bones still had some bits of skin and meat attached to them, but Kramer's bones were clean and white and appeared almost to have been bleached. At this point, it had been like six months. A Panamanian forensic anthropologist later claimed that under magnification, there were no discernible scratches of any kind on the bones, nothing of natural or man-made origin, and that there were no marks on the bones at all. The skull or other remains have never been found. So you would think if that if scavenger, you know, scavengers yep. had been yep. cleaning the bones, there'd yeah. be marks. Yeah. Yep. And also if they had met foul play, you'd yeah. think there'd be marks. <laughs> exactly. And there were no marks. There was nothing That's on the bones. weird. At least the bones they found. I mean, uh, did they find complete skeletons for both no, of them? No. Okay. They found fragments of bones. Uh, the skulls have never been found. Okay. Rib cages have never been found. Nothing like that has ever been found. Just these Pelvis, scattered bones. Though. Jeez. So now we get to the phones. Both phones were found in Froon's backpack. Froon had a Samsung Galaxy S3 and Kremers had an iPhone 4. So it's not like these are old no, they're new phones. 90s. What you know, year was this? This was 2000, 2000, I am looking, 2014. Okay, so, so I mean, pretty It's relatively recent. new. Yeah, yeah, I have an iPhone 4. That is what I use. That's my, my old iPhone that I use as an iPod. I have okay. all my music on there, my mm -hmm. podcasts on there. And it's a good phone. I mean, like, like I said, this isn't like the 90s right. where, you had a a hit, where you had to hit a button four times to get a T if you're right. text messaging somebody. <laughs> I mean, I have my phone is at least five years old. Yeah, and so it these, works are, perfectly these are good fine. phones. 
The phones showed that around five hours after the start of their hike, someone had dialed 112, the international emergency number, from Kramer's phone, and someone had dialed 911, the emergency number in Panama, from Froon's phone. And this was just five hours after Hmm. they set off. Okay. How long would it take you to hike five miles, do you think? Me? Five hours. How How far could you go in five hours? I could go quite far in five hours, I think. Five hours. I think you could walk 12 miles in that time, don't you think? Possibly. I mean, a 20-minute mile is pretty... A 15 to 20-minute mile is average for a walker. I Possibly. think you could go really far in that time. But you're, we'll see when we get to the camera okay. stuff. Okay, now where was I? So five hours in, they basically both dialed 911. Yeah, they b- both made emergency phone calls five hours in. But they didn't connect with anything? No. Okay. None of the calls from the girls had gone through due to a lack of reception in the area, except for one 911 call attempt on April 3rd that lasted for a little over a second before breaking up. Oh, jeez. So for that one split oh. second that they had a Could signal. you imagine? No, I, oh. I can't, but I don't oh, want to. Oh, we got to. through. Oh. Yeah. After April 5th, Froon's phone battery died at 6 o'clock a.m. and was not used again. Kremer's iPhone would not make any more calls either, but was occasionally turned on to search for reception. After April 6th, multiple attempts of an incorrect PIN code were entered to open the iPhone. Hmm. It never received the correct code again. On April 11th, the phone was turned on at 10.51 a.m. and was turned off for the last time at 11.56 a.m. So that suggests one of two things. Yeah. There's a third party who is trying to get it, or... The other per I wouldn't know your code to get into no, your phone. No, exactly, exactly. You wouldn't know my so, code. So there good, might not be a third party. That is good thinking on your part. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. But you hit the nail on the head. Okay. So here's their call situation. This is a little boring, but... This no, is, these this, are important details. This, yes, this is what happened. April 1st, the day they set out on the hike, a call to 112 on Kremer's iPhone was tried at 4.39 p.m., and a call to 112 was tried on Froon Samsung Galaxy at 4.51 p.m. Okay. So it's believed the girl set out at about 11 o'clock in the morning and at 4.30 and f- something happened by 4.30 where they were trying to, to call uh, authorities. Okay. On April 2nd, a day after they set out for the hike, a call to 112 was attempted on Froon's phone at both 6.58 a.m. and 10.53 a.m. and 911 was also tried at 10.53 a.m., and a call to 112 was tried on Kremer's phone at 6.14 p.m. Okay. So it's like they're trying wow. on and off throughout the day to try <laughs> to get some sort of signal through. Right. On April 3rd, a call to 911 was tried on Kremer's phone at 9.33 a.m. This is the last time an emergency number was tried. Froon's phone was turned on to check for a signal at 1.50 p.m. and again at 4.19 p.m. On April 4th, Kremer's phone was turned on to check for a signal at 9.33 a.m. and again at 1.42 p.m. There was no activity on Froon's phone. On April 5th, Kremer's phone checks for a signal at 10.50 a.m. and 1.37 p.m. Froon's phone checks for a signal at 4.50 a.m. and is turned on again at 5.56 a.m. when it shuts down due to the battery being dead. There is no further activity on this phone. On April 6th, five days after they set out, Kremer's phone is turned on at 10.26 a.m. and 1.37 p.m., but incorrect PIN numbers are entered. So does this mean Kremer had died or was unconscious and Froon was trying to use her phone? Or or, or Kremer was like delirious and just couldn't remember it. possibility. Ate some mushrooms on accident. Yep. You're hitting all the the stuff. You're you're good. You're good. (laughs) I listen to a lot of true crime. (laughs) There was no activity on any of the phones on April 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. On April 11th, Kremer's phone is turned on at 10.51 a.m. and it shuts itself off at 11.56 a.m. when the battery dies. I think it's interesting that we have this much detail about their phone records. Yeah, because you, every time you do something on your phone, there's a record on yeah. your phone of what you do. So, I mean, that's, that's true. it's helpful. Like in a case like this, it's really helpful to know. But they couldn't get any sort of location. Uh, it apparently not. Apparently no. Apparently I guess that they had no reception. There was nothing for the phones to ping no, off of. Nope. Yeah, they had no, no, uh, you know, geographical information on the phones. 
But it's interesting that there was no, I guess I don't know how phones work. There's no reception. Nothing went through, but it's the phone records would still show all of those attempts to make phone calls. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I don't know. That's just, it gets to me that there was nothing on April 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. And then in the 11th, it was turned on and shuts itself off like one last ditch. Yeah. You know, it, it bothers Tried. me to think of what. Mentally, emotionally, yeah, what, what they was were going, going through. Oh, kitty cat walking outside. Hi, kitty cat. Hi, kitty cat. See, that would be a better investigator for the, <laughs> add that to our investigation group for this case. Investigators <laughs> then started looking at Froon's camera and found some interesting things, and a lot of what was on the camera drives speculation about the case still today. The camera was a Canon PowerShot SX270HS, and I actually looked at like... It's a, just a standard digital camera? It's a camera. standard, you know, point and shoot. I looked at, <laughs> yeah. like, I looked at the instruction manual online, and it's it's a good camera. It, it uh, It's a very good camera. The first photos on the camera were taken the morning of April 1st when the girls had left for their hike. And I'm going to put a bunch of pictures. Where I look at photos? Yeah, I'm going to put a bunch of pictures on in both the Strangers and the Strange Sessions page. You number know, you one. Can, like number one is the one, the selfie. selfie. That's that's the first picture I saw of the girls where I was like, wow, they were really cute. Okay. I'll be the judge of that. They're cute, aren't they? I am waiting for it to come up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My computer can be slow that way. Hopefully it's not distorting our audio. Right. It shouldn't. Oh, yeah. They're cute. Thumbs up. Okay. Chris says, yeah. Okay. I'm not nuts. No, they're giving the thumbs up. Oh. You thought I was giving them the thumbs up? Yeah, I thought you were giving them the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, no, they're cute. They Girl next door. That's yeah. what they look like. The first photos on the camera were taken the morning of April 1st when the girls had left for their hike. The photos showed them on a trail near the Continental Divide taking selfies and photos of the area. I didn't put all the photos on your thing because there's just a lot of them, pictures of themselves with the yeah, background and stuff. It's beautiful, though, with Nothing, the It is. It's like really pretty. Nothing about these photos seems strange or suspicious. Nope. One of the photos established precisely that they were at El Mirador, which is a lookout on the El Pianista Trail at the summit of the Continental Divide. The last few images in this first set indicate the girls had left the Pianista Trail and likely crossed over to the other side of the divide. There, a network of trails exists that are not monitored by rangers or guides. Ooh. These trails are used almost exclusively by tribes of indigenous people living within the forest, including the Nagobi people, whose village was approximately 12 hours by foot from the Continental Divide and where the girl's backpack was found. So are you thinking, are the authorities thinking they did that un- unintentionally? Like they didn't realize they were crossing that? They don't know. That? They don't okay. know. I mean, that's why you have a guide in these places yeah so there's these pictures the first set of pictures that were on the camera are them still happy and smiling and and on the trail Mm -hmm. and uh then on april 8th which was well into when they were missing this is like they disappeared or they they tried calling uh emergency numbers on the first Mm -hmm. so on april 8th 90 flash photos were taken between 1 o'clock a.m. and 4 o'clock a.m., apparently deep in the jungle and in near-complete darkness. On average, that's one picture every two minutes being taken for the duration of 180 minutes. Most photos show only darkness. That's really unsettling. But a few photos do show things. The photos that do show things showed the area that the girls were in. It showed the girls' belongings spread out on rocks, oddly piled mounds of dirt, a stick with what looks like plastic wrap on it laying on top of a rock, another photo featuring what looks like a mirror and strips of paper on a rock, and most disturbingly, a photo of what appears to be Chris Kremer's head with blood on it. <gasps> Did you put that photo in here? No, oh. Not all of the photos have been released by the police. Oh, okay. The photo of Kremer's head only shows up for a second in a Dutch documentary. Do you have it on your thing? Not the... F- oh, let me get through the pictures. I'm looking at the... The there's, pictures with all the flashes at night? No, there should be a picture where there's like three different pictures, like in a little collage. Okay, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just her hair, really. It's just her hair. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. According to the web blog, Scarlet Letters, and this is the one that I am going to uh, put a link to because this is a really, really good blog about, the, if you're interested about this case, this is a blog to read. Okay. So according to the web blog, Scarlet Letters, quote, The most alarming sight, however, was the back of Chris's head with blood spilling from her temple. 
The media released only part of a screenshot of that photo showing her red hair, but not showing the blood on her temple. From what I understand, this was done by the Dutch TV program in Vondag and without the family's agreement. It was shown on December 2014, so a long time after the other handful of nighttime photos were made public. We don't see the blood, but have been told by the journalists showing the photo in their program that the blood is visible on Chris's temple and skin, yet they hid it on purpose by placing part of another photo over it due to privacy reasons. Okay. So that is the only known image of the picture of Chris Kremer's head with blood and with what some people said is a really bad wound on her okay. head. So some, you're probably going to get to this about why they took so many pictures with yeah, the flash. That's we yeah, rats in the theory. Because I know really. right where my mind goes. They something is out there and they can't see because they don't have flashlights, yeah. and so they're using the camera. Yep, yep. that's one to of the see theories. That's one of the them. theories about that. But then the people said, "Why did they do that the other nights? Why is it just that one night?" Well, cameras have batteries too. Cameras. This camera still had a really good really? battery charge. Yes, but maybe they were afraid of it running out. Running possibly. out of battery. Some people claim that the flashlights photo- people pack flashlights. <laughs> exactly. Some people claim that the photographs do show something and appear to be taken in a strange sequence with a close up shot, then a far away shot, a shot at the sky, followed by a repeated sequence in adjacent places in the same area. They believe that this is some kind of message. I don't know about that. I, mm. I look- How would you do that? I don't know. I don't know. The taxi driver declared that he dropped them off in the early afternoon, but the clock on their digital camera suggests that they started around 11 o'clock in the morning on their hike, so the timestamp on the camera could still have been set on another time zone. Oh, sure. And that's the thing is that people aren't sure that the time zone, mm. that the, t- the time stamps on the camera Yeah, I don't accurate. think you, your phone would update, but not a camera. Not necessarily a camera. Because the taxi said it was the early afternoon. He's thinking 1 o'clock, mm-hmm. and the camera is saying 11 o'clock. So, you know, nobody really knows. There wasn't even enough evidence left really to determine the cause of death. The official version, according to Panama's public ministry, the office of the state's attorney, is that Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon were dragged to death in the Serpent River and their bodies subsequently dismembered by scavengers. So the accidental, like they fell into the river? Yeah. It is stated that as many as 34 different fingerprints were found. 13 on the backpack, 12 on the phone and on the camera, as well as six different fingerprints on the girls' bras. Also, several were found on the digital camera from the girls and from other people. None of these fingerprints were investigated. What? Yeah. So it's like, what? You know, but th- so they, assume, they, say- they assume that with the backpack that, that the woman from the Nagobi tribe. They all looked it's the same van that was here last yeah. time. The woman from the Nagobi tribe grabbed it and then everybody Probably was passing it, it back and forth yeah. looking at it. So, but as far as phones, like not a lot of people touch my phone, you know? But if it was in the back then. Yeah, but 12 different fingerprints on the phone. <sighs> six different, do you think they'd six ever different fingerprints it? on the bras? I didn't even know you could get a fingerprint from a bra. Right. And yeah, none That's of the fingerprints odd. were investigated. Okay. So that's yeah. Crazy to me. So that's basically the case and now we get to theories. Okay. Two big theories of course. Theory number 1, they simply got lost and died. I mean, that's pretty plausible. It yeah. happens all the time. Mostlymystery.com, which is a website written by a local, said, quote, "If they'd stayed on the trail, they would have encountered wet and slippery ground, rocky slopes, thick vegetation possibly needing a machete to get through, and landslides. If they stepped off the trail, they would have fallen into a nightmare. If you step off a trail, any trail, you can be swallowed up in the blink of an eye. So that's totally... Because they know from the photos that they went past the end of the El Pianista Trail. Okay. Towards the side where it was just the indigenous people that used those trails. Okay, so does do these indigenous people have like a history of being violent? No, not at all. Okay. And from and from what I read, we'll get into this. I mean, this is one of the things against them being lost is that from what I read, it sounds like there's a lot of huts and little buildings all up in their area that the indigenous people use where okay. they, they should have, have they shelter. should have come across those. Yeah. You know. Hmm. That's Are there reports that there is a really beautiful hidden waterfall and the girls were maybe looking for that when they got lost hmm. because they went off the trail? Right. 
Locals from Panama stated that even though the trails that the girls were said to be on were fairly easy to follow, a trail did come after those which was very difficult fo- to follow and should have only been followed by the local indigenous people. So it's very possible that the girls left the monitor trail, wandered too far on the other trail, and became lost. As far as the photos on the camera, there are a few theories, including the belief that the girls were trying to navigate their way at night and trying to see their, where they were going using the camera's flash, or that they were possibly using the camera's flash to alert a possible nearby search party or an airplane flying overhead, or that they were trying to scare off animals with the light. Wouldn't we know if there were a search party out? There were search party outs at this time. At night, though? Yeah. Okay. Yep, there were search parties out this entire time hmm. looking for them. Okay. And my, if any of those are true, my theory is that they were trying to alert a, uh, an airplane or a nearby search party. They maybe right. heard the people calling for them. that's why they stopped yeah. after that. Yeah. Mostlymystery.com again says, quote, Early days, no one knew what resources they had. Food was important, water even more so, mm-hmm. but possibly the most critical item was a GPS or even a simple compass. Lacking those, the sun would be their only reference point, and the sun in Panama, like so many other things here, is not always what it seems to be. Here's why. The tiny, narrow country of Panama runs in an east-west direction, almost doubling back on itself, serpent-like. Owing to a peculiar optical illusion, the sun here appears to rise in the west, not the east. If the women were not aware of this peculiarity, they would be pulled in the wrong direction, away from town, further into the jungle. This alone is a powerful, potentially tragic story element. Wow, yeah. I mean, there are definitely a lot of things working against them here. Yeah, yep. And if they ran out of food and water, then exhaustion, delirium, hallucination, I mean, all kinds of things. There was water in the bottle in their... Oh, really? But nobody checked to see if it was river water right. or what. God, that it, could be a horrible it, idea, it, that's too. That's one of the theories, is that they were they, they resorted to drinking water. river water. Ugh. It's believed that they possibly died in or near the Rio Calubra, or Serpent River, which then carried their partial remains to where they were eventually found. And one thing that a lot of people, including myself, have a problem with is the fact that if these girls were lost, why did they not record any kind of message for their families on their phones? It's theorized that they were trying to save the battery on their phones by hardly using them, but the camera that the girls had with them had a really good battery and could shoot video, so why did they not take any videos about what had happened? Right. And that's a big thing. Uh, Hmm. Some people speculate that with that one second or two seconds they had where they had a connection, that might have been enough to get a text message out. And they said, why was there no draft of a text message on their phones where they, you know, they could have tried sending that out. Unless somebody was with them. Unless somebody was with them. But you would think that if you were trying to get out, you would try to send a text oh, message yeah. or an email. And text a text, me- a text message can go through in a split second. So right. it's possible that that one second they were connected, they could have gotten a text message out. But mm-hmm. you would think there would be a draft of a text message saved on their phones. Right. Or... I know that if I was lost in the woods and thought I was going to die, I would leave a video, mm-hmm. like a Blair explaining Witch style happened. video explaining what happened. And With this one snot. drop on yeah. your nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saying what happened. And, you know, I love you guys. and Apologizing to your apologize. mom. <laughs> apologize. <laughs> Losing a map and whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, mm-hmm. I, uh, I know I would do that. And people said that Lizanne was like a notorious diary keeper. She loved keeping diaries. So it's like, why... Did they not do this? Why was there no record of this? It is strange. Mm -hmm. The girls appeared very fit, but a co-worker of the Boquette Equestrian Center, I think I said that right, mentioned to have seen the girls, but before April 1st. Equestrian? That too. (laughs) So (laughs) a horse place. I totally blanked on that word. Whatever Krista just said. I had to think about it. I'm like, (laughs) is he trying to say equestrian? Whatever Krista just said. (laughs) The co-worker at the... Equestrian. Equestrian. Yes, center. I <laughs> can't say that word. <laughs> Said he saw the girls before April 1st. He stated, quote, they were hot and sweating and red from walking, so all things point to them not being used to the altitude, sure. no matter how fit they are. Yeah. The host family also mentioned that Lisette had been coughing because of her asthma, and she had a sore throat and suspected that she was getting sick. Jeez. Oh, 
So they look fit, but they weren't a hundred percent. Well, altitude, mm-hmm. heat, lack of water. Yep. I don't care yep. how fit you are. So basically, that whole thing says the two girls ventured off the trail, thinking that it would be okay, and they just got hopelessly lost. Mm-hmm. And uh, number two, which is kind of a sub theory, basically, okay. says that Chris Cram- Chris Kremers was in a bad accident. Okay. From the photos that were found on Lizanne's camera, investigators could determine that the girls were at a point on the trails where there is something called a monkey bridge. A monkey bridge is basically when a person wraps their arms around ropes above them and walks on a single rope. I mean, you've probably seen these. Yeah. Uh, I watched videos of people doing them, and they're really wobbly. I and would not do that. I would not <laughs> do that either. If you don't know what you're doing, they can be very, yeah. very dangerous. Uh, they theorized that maybe they tried to cross a river this way. Chris Kremers went first. And people theorized that Chris Kremers maybe tried going across his bridge first and fell and either died or was severely injured, which is why Lizanne was trying to call emergency services. I mean, that kind of makes sense because that would have been around the time mm-hmm. that they got to that bridge. That I would think bridge. she was severely injured, though, because yeah. why would yep. she take a picture of her f- yep. dead exactly. friend? That'd be weird. Yeah. Uh, when her phone's battery died, she later tried to use Chris's phone but couldn't because she didn't know the password, which would explain the incorrect pin attempts. Both phones were also found in Lizanne's backpack, which would explain why Chris's phone wasn't with her. Yes. But that doesn't make sense with the fact that somebody was trying to dial 911 from Kremer's phone days after this. You know, so. Is Kremer the one who they had the picture of her bloody head? Yes. Hand? Okay. So if she had died, it doesn't make sense. Why all maybe of a sudden? She came to. That's maybe the thing is that maybe she was just badly hurt and came too long enough to unlock her phone. Yep, this makes sense. But if Kremers died immediately in the accident, it doesn't make any sense why calls were attempted from her phone until April fifth, when the incorrect PIN numbers started showing up. I don't Could, think she died right away. No, I don't either. Could she have been just badly hurt in the accident, and the two girls got lost in an attempt to get her out? Yeah. Then there's the photos of what looks like the back of Kremers' head. This photo was never released and only shows up for a few frames in a documentary about the girls. Was it at night again? Yeah, that was okay. one of the nighttime shots. Some people say that you can see what looks like blood in Kremer's hair or wounds on her head on her, or on her temple. And other people say that the blood and wounds have been edited out in the photo shown on the documentary. My guess is she's like, how bad is it? Yep. If the photo does show Kremer's injured head, people don't know if this is her walking on the trail after falling and injuring herself or a photo of her after she had fallen off the bridge and died. Maybe Froon was trying to document what happened. Some people believe that in that picture that she's dead already and that Froon was taking a picture to see what had happened. I think it's more, I just don't think she died right no, away. I don't either. I think it's I, more likely that yep. she's like, I don't, it doesn't take a, can you take a picture? Of what does my head look like? Is yeah. it bad? Yep. Do I need yep. stitches? Like, yep. because that would be the only explanation as to how she got the phone unlocked. Yeah. To make that yeah, last attempt. Exactly. Exactly. Some people also believe that one of the photos at night is a shot taken down from the top of a cliff or ravine showing what they think is a body laying at the bottom. It most looks likely like a water bottle. Is most, that most likely of, Kremer's body. Is that one of the pictures you gave me? There's one where I have the picture and then there's the next one has it circled. It looks like a water bottle. I think it looks like a leaf. I don't <laughs> There's people that swear to god that they think that that circled part is Kremer's body at the bottom of a ravine. And I, I magnify it. I don't see I it as a... thought it was a water bottle. No, I don't see it as a body. I see it as like a leaf sticking out from the side of the ravine. I can't zoom in on it. I don't think it looks like a body. It does not look like a body. No, but there's people that swear that that is Kremer's body, that she took a picture of her after she fell off a ravine. But then people say if she what took... What was she wearing? Was uh, she the one in the stripes or the one stripes. in the blue? Uh, Kremer's was the one in the stripes in the jean shorts. It just doesn't look like a body. No, it doesn't. I I still think it looks like a water bottle. There's people that swear that that is her body. But Mm. then other people say, so Kremers fell off this deep ravine and died. And then did Froon climb down there and take a picture of the back of her head? I mean, that makes makes no sense. sense. No. So there's people that believe that she died. Like, and I right don't away. think she's taking pictures to take pictures. I think it's so dark. It's the only way that yeah. she can see what's my, going on. My, uh, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, but my belief is that the picture is her walking on the trail 
with with just trying Froon. to see just yeah like she's she stepped ahead of Froon for a second when she was taking all these pictures with the flash i mm-hmm. think that's what happened i don't think she's dead in that photo Mm-mm. you know i don't even see any trace of blood or a wound but people have said that those are edited out you know the people that put that documentary together said they placed that photo over the other, over the photo of her head to purposely blot out the head wound right so i don't know i mean i uh, you know, we'll get to, when we get to the end with the what do you think? Okay, I still really don't know. Big theory number two: they were murdered. There are unofficial reports that a total of twenty six people have disappeared in this area. Hmm. So they think that it's possible the girls were murdered. Some people speculate that the girls reached the top of the mountain, the main tourist spot, turned around, and on their return ran into people who abducted them. People have said that if the girls mistakenly continued on the trail after reaching El Mirador, instead of turning around like most people do at that point, they would have encountered a few scattered but visible habitations where they could have asked for help or directions. This hypothesis suggests that the night photos were taken by the girls' killers who also made the failed emergency cell phone calls. This would make it look as though the girls survived much longer than they actually had. Evidence discovered later was planted in the wilderness in a confusing way to muddle the investigation. It wouldn't explain the repeated attempts to get into the one phone and then finally getting into the phone if they were dead already. Yeah. But it could be the people killing them wanting to make it look like the girls were just lost trying to... They wanted people to believe that the girls got lost and died rather get that, than killed. But how would they know the code to get in her phone? I don't know. To make that one last I don't know. attempt. I don't know. Some people believe that they were killed at that point, that they were abducted. Yeah. In the context of the girls' deaths, the dog's behavior is also puzzling. He did not stay with the girls. Logically, they would have kept him with them, or we, he would have remained with them, especially if they were in distress. The fact that he abandoned them leads some people to believe that he was separated from them physically on the first day. Possibly, they were taken into a dwelling and he was left outside. Kind of makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. I would have been like, Blue, show me the way home. Because exactly. clearly, Blue exactly. found his way home. Exactly. One question everyone asks is, why didn't the girls turn back when they realized they were going in the wrong direction? And why didn't they mark the trail so they could return? Even if they'd been turned around in the beginning, common sense said they would quickly see that they were going the wrong way. The trail changes abruptly on the Boca side. It would be hard not to notice those changes. Lawyer Enrique Aroca, who works for the Kremers family, hiked the trail himself and went all the way to where the girls' bones were found. He doesn't believe the trail is poorly marked or that the girls got lost. Neither do Chris's parents, who hiked up to what is being called the paddock area. They believe that it would have been impossible for the girls to have gotten lost, and they firmly believe that a third party was involved. Unless they went off the trail. Mm -hmm. And people do that all the time, thinking, oh, I'll find my way back. But Mm -hmm. when you're in a dense rainforest... It's so easy to get turned around. It's inter- easy to get turned around in a regular forest. It is. It is. An interview on YouTube with Chris Kremer's father, he says he believes the girls did not die of natural causes. He talks about how the pelvic bone was found far from the jean shorts and says that you would think the shorts would stay on a skeleton or on the remains. Not if an animal was tearing at it. The DailyBeast.com says... Thanks to newly unearthed maps and interviews with the original search parties, we now know exactly where those hopes and dreams were snuffed out. The victim's highest place remains were found at about 2,300 feet above sea level, near the headwaters of the Serpent River. The spot is in the upper cloud forest, as opposed to the lowland jungle, as was previously thought. At that elevation, temperatures are cool, average decomposition rates relatively slow, and large carnivores uncommon. According to multiple forensic experts interviewed by the Daily Beast, taken together, these factors could indicate that the small size, scant, and scattered bone fragments found in the Kremers' Froon case are not the result of natural causes, but instead point to a crime. A lot of people point out that although the Ria Culebra, or Serpent River, originates near the El Pianista Trail, in April its flow is minimal and unable to drag a body. Also, the remains of the girls were found upstream, not downstream, as would be logical if the current had dragged them. Are there birds of prey? There have to be. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. According to noted criminologist Octavio Calderon, it's strange for a foot to be broken off at the ankle remaining in its boot. It's also peculiar that most of Lizanne's bones had meat or tissue attached while none of Chris's did. 
And perhaps the biggest that oddity is odd. perhaps the biggest oddity of all, Chris's bones, but not Lizanne's, were hyper bleached by phosphorus, a substance missing from the local non volcanic soil. And they were near each other. It's mm-hmm. not like they were found in different mm-hmm. locations, right? This gives rise to the statement by Calderon that this could indicate the use of fertilizers or chemicals on the remains, saying that, quote, desperation may have led to the attacker to use sub- such substances to disappear the evidence. Mm-hmm. Some have speculated that the girls used the camera flash to light their way, but others familiar with walking trails at night debunk that, asserting that the flash causes momentary blindness and prevents one eyes from becoming accustomed to the dark. Yeah, but I you can might not see be that. thinking. No, you're, that might you're not be panicking. Yeah, exactly. And if you're hearing something in the woods around you, you're going to be. I think it's that goes back to what I said. They were they were maybe hearing something and they were trying to see what it yeah. was. Yep. Even if you can't see it in the moment because you're blinded, yep. you can see it in the photo. Maybe. But also, if none of the photos showed anything. No. Just that weird the forest branch. Is weird, that though. weird branch that they had. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the leaves on it? Yeah. With the with the red it looks like red bag. Like red oh, paper. To me, I assume those were leaves. <laughs> I, That's so funny. I assumed looking at that that those were Oh, that is a bag. That those were bags and they I f- the only thing I can think of about that is they attached that plastic and used that to try to signal airplanes yeah. or helicopters. That's the only thing that makes sense about that. And there's like scraps of paper. Yeah. Yeah. People said it was like gum wrappers. And, that, hmm. you know, so they don't know if they were trying to do something reflective. One of the other photos has a mirror. You can hmm. see. I don't know if I have I that. I didn't put that in here, yours. No. But then some people say that that wasn't actually from their photos, that that was from another photo that somebody else took. And it got mixed up with their photos hmm. saying that this was theirs when it really wasn't. Well, that's weird. Yep. Also, there seemed to be a preference for the girls to try a call at the same exact time or in specific time blocks. Some say this may point towards foul play and a third party's work schedule. Which is, I mean, if you have their phones, you killed these girls, you have their phones and you want it to look like they're out trying to get a signal, you get done with work at a certain time, you're going to go out and try at the same time. Hmm. The times that they're trying for the signals has always been weird to me. Right. You know. I mean, I I know that signals come in better at night just because of the way the ionosphere or whatever mm-hmm. works, and the, just their their schedule for trying signals seemed weird to me. Because it was like in the morning, yeah, and then again at yeah. like dusk yeah. or whatever. Yep. A French couple had hiked the same trail the next day and were told by a guard they encountered that he had heard screams the day before from the jungle. Nobody thought to look into that. I apparently <laughs> <or> apparently <laughs> not. Apparently not. Hmm. Then we get to image 509. After retrieving the, I don't know if it's EXIF or EXIF. After retrieving the, retrieving, after retrieving the EXIF image data, investigators noticed that there was a photo missing on the SD card. Image data 0507 and 0508 are the last pictures taken with the camera on April 1st when the girls were taking pictures of themselves until a week later when the series of nighttime snaps were taken. But the first photo in that series is image 0510, so there is no image 509. If someone deleted the photo off the camera, it should be retrievable using basic image recovery software. The fact that the photo was not at all retrievable leads people to believe that Lizanne's camera was tampered with and a third party deleted that photo using a computer and erasing program, which makes deleted photos irretrievable. And then went and put the camera back out in the backpack? Yep. Wow. That's the theory. It seems really elaborate. It does. I mean, if somebody, they could have just buried everybody. And all their but belongings it, and no one not, would that, ever that find That picture them. not being there makes no sense. No, it doesn't. Uh, people that have seen all the pictures said they took some really crappy pictures. You know, like where you can see that they accidentally snapped a picture right. while they were oh, walking. Oh, we should delete that. And they didn't delete any of those. So really? why is this picture in between the good pictures of them walking up the trail and posing? And whatever And happens. whatever happened at night when they were snapping the camera continuously, there's a picture taken between those two that is missing. Yeah, that and doesn't make sense. Cannot be retrieved. I mean, you can't. You know, like I know I've helped my brother with it, I think, where he lost a bunch of pictures. And when you delete something on your computer, it's not really deleted. You, it's just right, you can waiting find to everything. get rewritten over with new data so you yeah. can retrieve it. And that's the same with the phone. And the only way that that photo would be irretrievable is if someone used an erasing program and purposely went to erase that into the camera, into the camera, hmm. which is bizarre. 
And it doesn't make sense that that would be a glitch with the camera at that one certain time. And if the girls had deleted that photo, they would have been able to retrieve it. So that's that's weird. That's that's, that's one of really the, weird. Yeah, that's one of the weirder things about this case. That is like the one thing, thing that, that makes you can't think explain. that's something. Yeah, because I feel like everything else. I think when you're in a situation like this, you panic. Yeah, you do things that to, in the aftermath to outsiders looking in looks really bizarre and makes no sense. Yep. But really, there's a totally plausible explanation for it. Yep. But that the photo missing is weird. Yes. The fact that even if they might not have been in range to make a call, they could have had a connection for a second or two that would send a text message out explaining what happened to them or giving some indications of their whereabouts seems strange. You would think that they would have at least a text message stored on their phone that they were trying to send out. This also didn't record anything at all. I mean, they also didn't record anything at all. No final messages for their beloved parents. This, in the minds of many, is another indicator of foul play, as is the lack of knowing the correct SIM code to access Kremer's phone. Right. And, I, I don't and know if, about that because I I don't know anybody's phone code to get into their phone except for mine. Like me too. if you died right here, I wouldn't know how to get into your phone. Right. And uh it, it, But but you would think that Kremers would have maybe told her her code in case something happened. It bothers me to think of the mindset these girls that, were in when this was going on. Oh yeah, they must have just been horrified. Yeah, cuz this is bad. Panicked. You know. And you're, I'm sure you're not thinking clearly for starters. Right. Especially after how many days? Yeah. But the thing Without is, too, that water. you don't need to get into the phone to make an emergency call. Right. Like, no, you don't. No, you don't even need... Like, if my you don't phone even were locked, you phone. could dial 911. Yeah, you don't even know, need a phone carrier. Your phone can be bad. It can be no carrier. It'll still make a And it'll still call. make a 911 call. And they mm. wonder if the girls didn't know that. Well, they didn't have reception anyway, though. No, but then people theorize that a third party was the one trying to get into the phone to see if there were any pictures or any information about him on the phone. How did they get into it eventually, though? That's the thing. They didn't get into it eventually. No, because you said, I thought that the timeline showed that someone repeatedly tried the wrong code, and then like a few days later, no, they it never turned got, back no, on. No, they never got into their phone. They turned it back on to see... Because didn't just, it try like a half a second? It made like a... No, that was early in that. Oh. Once once the PIN number wasn't entered, nobody got into that phone again. Okay. It was turned on that last day. It was I just had that turn, totally messed up. It then. was turned on that last day to see maybe what the signal looked like. And then it died. I it, thought... It was left on for an hour or whatever. And then it died. I thought somebody got back no, into it. No, nobody got back into that phone. Okay. Well, that bl- after that day where the PIN was entered correctly the last time, nobody got into it. Okay. So there was no... So the last time it was entered correctly, then all those attempts were made and it was never entered correctly again. Okay. I totally misunderstood that. That changes my theory. (laughs) So there's many unanswered questions leading to the theory that they didn't just get lost and die. And here's a list of some of these questions. Okay. How is it that certain bones appear together on the banks of the river? Why are so few bones whole and are mostly fragments where are the rest of the bones why would the bone fragments be completely smashed but cheap and fragile sunglasses in the backpack remained undamaged well the backpack wasn't located by their bones though it was located near where their bones were found so if the backpack a lot of people say that it was a cheap backpack it should have leaked stuff in there should have been ruined and nothing was ruined everything was Mm. in like perfect condition so it's almost like it was placed there yeah why is there meat and tissue attached to Lizanne's bones, but not to Chris's? That is really weird, too. Why is it declared that the girls died by being dragged in the river when the pathologists say that the bones show no signs of abrasion? Right. Why was wild animal activity cited as a possible secondary cause of death when there were no signs of animal activity on the bones or the clothes? Why did Lizanne's foot break off at the ankle without trauma? How did Chris's bones come to appear being bleached and having high levels of phosphorus? Why is there not a single help me marker, initial scraped into a tree, arrows, or an SOS, anything? That could be because you're not thinking clearly. Delirium. Yep. Why are there no we're lost or goodbye video messages left of any kind on the phone or the camera? Why are there no stored text messages in the phone to their parents trying to get sent out? Why didn't they document what happened to themselves better in photos? Why did the backpack and its contents appear in much better shape than they should have? It was a cheap backpack and things inside should have been soaked or broken. What do the two nighttime pictures of stones mean, especially the red bags and sticks? Did Chris take her shorts off and why? Why were both bras of the girls taken off and put in the backpack? 
Now, here's the thing. I'm friends with a lot of girls. And granted, I don't have boobs. But <laughs> a lot of my female friends complain about their bras yeah, a lot. They're that they're uncomfortable. uncomfortable. <laughs> so if you're out in the woods and you're sweating, lost. Sweating. Yeah. Sweating. You're going to. Take your bra off. You're going to want to make yourself as comfortable as possible. Yeah. And at, maybe at, wash it yeah. and dry it. And, and save after it they're lost, later. at this point, someone seeing them without their bra on is probably the least of their concerns. Yeah. You know? The indigenous people might not even wear tops Exactly. Bra, we know. Exactly. Why didn't the girls turn back after they placed their first emergency call? Since they got into trouble so early in the trip, as evidenced by their emergency calls, how could they have fallen to a river that was 12 hours away? So those are just some of the questions. Just kept walking in the but wrong But I think direction. all those questions do have reasonable Validity. explanations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if the girls were murdered, who did it and why? Now we get to these theories. I was going to say, sounds like a crime of opportunity. Theory number one, the men that the girls knew or met up with or partied with in the days before followed them, raped them, and killed them. Photos taken in the days before the hike show the girls with a large group of men. The men were questioned by police after the girls' deaths, but no arrests were made. Hmm. If they have alibis. Yeah. Uh, but like you said before, I think it's... Say the men did follow them and rape them. I think the phone stuff, all that stuff is way too elaborate. Yeah. Just hide them. Yeah. Bury them. Yeah. Why go through all of that? Yeah. So that's theory number one. The men that the girls knew or met up with or partied with. Okay. Theory number two, the guide that they were supposed to meet killed them. Eh. Reddit user (laughs) Dolores says, quote, There's some peculiar things. He was one of the last people to speak to them before they went for their walk, and he was the one who found their remains. He also went to their host family after they didn't show up for a tour with him on April 2nd and rummaged through their room for a significant amount of time, taking photos which were later sold to the local Panamanian media. Police were angry at him for this and stated in the official documents that he should never have been allowed to enter that room without police escort. The Daily Beast leaked a police report in which this guide is accused by Panamanian authorities of searching their room without a police escort, and they accused him of potentially tampering with evidence. There is a lot of misinformation circling about this case, and it is impossible to know as outsiders what is true and what isn't. But here is some of the info. The girl's few remains were found by him and some locals a few miles from his isolated ranch in the jungle. I even heard and read that the Indian woman who found the backpack gave it first to him before it was later handed over to the police. Again, photos were made of that and leaked to the press. So, so this he is, could this have is erased me. that is, photo. This is, he could have been the one that erased that photo. Yes. He had access to that. That's right where my mind yep. went. So back now to her post. This tour guide that other tourists have talked about as well online is said to have been pushy. Some tourists claimed online that he was known to only take females on tours, preferably European females, and having been extremely touchy-feely with other tourists. One tourist testified that when she refused his attempts, he turned from friendly into aggressive and how frightened she was. No idea if this is true, of course. There's conflicting information out there about this local tour guide. He offered his services to the girls for the Pianista Trail, apparently, and was recommended to them by the language school they attended, but for some reason the girls decided not to use his services on the day they climbed the Pianista Trail alone. So the girls did talk to him the day before they went for their walk, but declined his services offer to take them for the Pianista Walk with them when he offered an overnight stay at his isolated ranch in the jungle. (laughs) Then information gets muddy because authorities claim that the girls did, in fact, strangely enough, have an appointment with him for a trip the following day, April 2nd, to climb to the local volcano for which they didn't show up. And there is even mention online of another appointment with him for that Saturday for a guided trip to a strawberry farm near the volcano. So he cannot have scared them too much considering they agreed on their tour together. Who, or was this a lie? Because in right. Lizanne's diary, the day prior to their walk, she had written something down about this tour guide. That he offered them an overnight stay in his isolated ranch in the jungle over the river. But that he was creepy and there is even info that she wrote down that he may have groped Chris after which the girls changed their mind exactly. about him. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. They... Met him, got the heebie-jeebies, said, no, we're not going to use you for a tour guide. And he's saying they probably never made an appointment with him. Yep, exactly. And this is still from the same post. But if that is true, I don't get why they still agreed to use his services on April 2nd to climb the local volcano But who says they did? Just him? I don't know. I don't know. 
And the report also mentions that the guide also immediately spoke of the location where Chris and Lizanne's remains were eventually found, despite them still being missing persons at that point and not leaving a note about their whereabouts. I do like to add here that they did discuss their plans to walk this Pianista trail at the language school the day prior and that the guide was, in fact, contacted by them to discuss the possibilities of a guided tour from him. They just declined the offer either because it said they didn't have the money for it or because they opted for the volcano tour with him the day of the 2nd of April and instead thought they could easily walk the Pianista trail together alone. It was marketed as a relatively uncomplicated walk, and in Holland, women are pretty independent and proactive. But so here he they knew they were going to be out yeah, there alone. But here they were very badly prepared, going in their skimpy clothes, no survival stuff in their backpack, hardly any food or water, nothing to defend themselves with, etc. So yeah, that's that's one of the things. Some people think that this tour guide, knowing their plans for this specific trail and knowing the area very well somehow walked behind them or towards them, and either they ran away from him getting lost or worse. He was with the team that found their bones, and perhaps they got lost on their own account, but unbeknownst to the official search team, he looked for the girls himself in the depth of night and possibly found them first. It's all speculation, of course, but his isolated ranch was not checked by police for DNA samples of the girls and the Dutch sniffer dogs that were later flown in never made it as far as his ranch either. The difficult thing is that there's no confirmation of precisely where the girls were at any given point. Their phone logs didn't make a connection, so no GPS location is available. So it could be highly unlikely that he was anywhere near the night photo spot. The fact that he found them could simply be due to the fact that he lived nearby and was sincerely doing everything he could looking to help out. But anyway, there is a lot of info about this guy, and he is featured in Dutch programs retracing the girls' routes with their family members so the family members know him, talk to him, and apparently like him. But what makes me doubt that the tour guide was involved is that he had an appointment with the girls April 2nd to go on a tour, which we think. Uh, if we were to believe the reporting on this, he was the one calling their parents, discussing it with the local host family, and calling the authorities. He helped searching and was in the team that found the remains. But that would also mean that he maybe had no time to hold them hostage and make fake phone calls or uh, mess with the camera those days after the disappearance as he was actually out and about contacting relatives and talking to the police. See, all of those things make him seem uninvolved. Yeah. Because why, if he well, did it, why thing, would he help if, look for if them? If I kill someone and I, on the search team looking for him and I'm the first one to find them, that kind of throws suspicion off me. Right. That makes me look like, oh, why he, would could, he, lead he right couldn't to have it. done that because he led them. Right. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, other people that I've read stuff about online said this guy is a little handsy or whatever, but. They don't think he did it. Hmm. But, you know, and this might be a guy thing. This is, might be one of those things where it's different because you're a girl, you know. But if I had a ranch and there were some girls from out of town that were going to be, I would offer them to stay at my ranch knowing that it would be free. That doesn't mean that I'm going to do anything with them. I'm just giving them. You're a normal human being. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot and of that's creepy the thing. people that's out the there. That's the thing is that I would do that and maybe he instantly did that too that doesn't mean he's gonna do any i mean it's a warning sign yeah but i don't think it means he's gonna try anything i think the i fact think it's just though, him offering to to help them but i think the fact that other people have said that he is a little creepy yeah. and handsy yeah i would like to find out good. if it's true that he groped chris because well, that would be a there'd big there'd be no way to know that no we're never gonna find that no out. no so that's theory number two is that it was the tour guide okay Theory number. I mean, dude had opportunity, had knowledge, exactly. knows the land. If, if anybody did, I would think he did. Absolutely. Theory number three, a serial killer. Uh, according to the Daily Beast, an escaped convict, Frank Pardo, had broken out of a Panamanian prison in March of 2013, and he's another possible perp with the past in the vicinity. A former assassin with the Mexican cartels, Pardo was convicted of the satanic murder of a woman in 1996 who showed signs of torture. Satanic? Yeah. Mexican Pardo, cartel are into the... Apparently. Okay. <laughs> Pardo had been known to frequent the areas around Boquette and remains at large as of this writing. Oh, so geez. they think maybe he was out there and... But then I, when, I just have a hard time with thinking that he's going to kill them and then go through all the trouble of right. faking their phone records, doing all that. Maybe I'm just not a good serial killer. I don't Although know. serial killers, I mean, you do, they have rituals. They have yeah. things that they yeah. do in every, totally. you know. Yep. Yep. It's it's part of the, the thrill of it, I guess. Yeah. Not I, just I, making them disappear. No, I agree. I totally agree. 
I just feel, feel like that is unnecessary. I don't know. One more conceivable culprit is the so-called Hannibal Lecter of Bugaba, who was arrested back in March of 2017 for hacking up a 27-year-old woman he'd met on Facebook, then bonfiring her body in his own backyard not 20 minutes from Boquet. When police caught up with him, he was carrying unidentified raw meat around in a suitcase, oh God. <laughs> thus leading to his cannibalistic nickname. Press reports indicate he's still under investigation for possible links to other missing persons in the area. Hmm. So it's that was just bad luck that they would happen to come across one of these killers on the trail. In the jungle? But it's possible. Theory number four, or sub-theory number four, okay. under murders, drug traffickers or drug cartels. A high-ranking examiner agreed to be interviewed only under the condition of an anonymity. <laughs> what the hell? You added a few extra syllables I did. in there. I did. Anonymity? Thank you. <laughs> Saying that he had received death threats after discussing sensitive investigations in the past. Cesaros? Sicaros? Sicaro. Uh, that's uh, assassins. Mm -hmm. The source says, referring to the cartel smuggling routes that link Panama's eastern coastline with Colombia and Venezuela to the south and Mexico to the north. There ought to be a national red alert for foreigners and especially women, he says, but of course that would be bad for tourism. Panama is a commercial port for the Sinola, Sinola cartel and others, he says, and goes on to mention forced prostitution, rape, and sex trafficking as other threats posed by organized crimes operating in the area. Mm. He says that part of the problem is that publicizing such dangers could weaken the influx of tourist money, which makes up almost 20% of Panama's GDP. And 20% is a big chunk. Mm -hmm. You don't want people thinking that girls get killed hiking the trails. Right. There are also reports that the cartel disposes of bodies in a way that would have resulted in bleached bones. Prominent criminologist commenting on the case attributes this to the body being covered in fertilizer, the hasten decomposition, which the cartels have been known to do. Why only one body, though? I don't know. I don't know. But that's theory number four, drug traffickers or drug cartels. Okay. Theory number five, organ traffickers. According to the Daily Beast, back in the fall of 2012, a young woman was found dead and partly burned near a highway just north of Boquette. At first, it was thought to be just a case of domestic violence. Just a case of domestic violence. That's like all. it's nothing. And her boyfriend was arrested, but it soon came out that the 18-year-old college student, Aria Guerra, was missing all of her vital organs. They were said to have been removed in a surgical manner via a Y-shaped incision from her shoulders to her pubic bone. Ugh. Because two other victims supposedly were found in similar conditions in the region, organ trafficking has been hypothesized as a motive in the girl's disappearance. At least four people were arrested for that girl's murder. Links to a proven organ trafficking ring operating just across the border in Costa Rica were claimed in local news accounts. Isn't that crazy that that's a thing? It is crazy. I, you know, I hear about it, but I didn't really like think about it being a thing until I was researching this. And it's like, God, that's horrible. Like, yeah. You're so desperate that you'll buy an organ off of the black Somebody, market yeah, that yeah. you know someone probably got murdered for? Yep. So yeah, organ traffickers. Mm. Theory number six, sex trafficking. Some people believe that the girls never actually made it to the trail and the photos of the girls on the trail were photoshopped. People commented on the strange way Lizanne seems stretched in one of the photos, saying that her left breast looks disproportionately large in this photo. Other people say that the cloud cover looks unusually different in photos supposedly taken only a few minutes apart. The photo that you're looking at is the one where she's like stretched out and she's... I don't know if I put that on your in your photos. There's two where they're putting their thumbs There's up. There's one with just Lizanne where she's like yeah. stretched. She doesn't look stretched to me. Where she's like going bent sideways. She's facing the camera though. She's facing the camera, but she's like kind of... A little bit turned to the yeah. right. Yeah. But people say that her left breast looks unusually large in that photo. I think it's and just I don't because get the it. other one's I don't, turned away from the... I don't get it because Here's I... Here's the thing. Most breasts are not symmetrical. No, exactly. There's usually one exactly. that's a little and higher, if you're, a little lower. It looked to me like she was like standing like kind of a little a weird way. This that arm she's, is behind her. Yeah, so she's pushing this arm, that... Yeah, there's nothing out, wrong with this photo. You know, and I stared at that, not at the breast, but I stared at that photo for... A while, and it started to look photoshopped to me, but I think that's just because I was Suggestion. thinking it. I don't think that the photos... I mean, a lot of people do believe that those photos were photoshopped. 
people go down a rabbit hole and they yeah. just start grasping at yep. straws. When I look at the way the sun is hitting the yeah. foliage behind her, it's hitting her in the same yeah. exact angle. Exactly. It's creating shadows that make her left exactly. breast people, seem larger people, than her I read, right. I read people saying that it's just a really good Photoshop job. Or it's just a photo. <laughs> or it's just a photo. But I don't people understand say the cloud, why this would I, be so elaborate. I don't know. People say that the cloud cover looks unusually different in photos taken only a few minutes apart. Also, and this is interesting. To also, me, that's nothing. Also, the photos supposedly show that the girls were definitely at the Continental Divide at 1 o'clock p.m. on April 1st. People figured that out from the sun, the position of the sun, uh, from the camera, the timestamp on the camera. Okay. So uh, the photos supposedly show that the girls were definitely at the Continental Divide at 1 o'clock p.m. on April 1st, but five witnesses in Boquette claimed to have seen the girls in town at the time that would have prohibited them from being at the Divide at 1 o'clock p.m. Hmm. A woman at the girls' Spanish language school swears that they were at the school at that same hour. A local guide says he also saw them and saw them coming back and thought they took a taxi. Another man said he saw them between 2.30 and 3 o'clock, and a local woman who claimed she saw them at 4.05 that afternoon described what they were wearing, and when the camera images were later found, what the woman said they were wearing was correct. That's interesting, because I think in a small town like that, you would remember yeah. two young girls like yeah. this. Yeah, so there's a lot of people that place them being in town this afternoon that they were supposed to be on the mountain, which huh. is weird, but... On was the, the other, dog with them? On the, uh, I don't know. On the other hand, mm. eyewitness, t- you know, eyewitness testimony can be it's super notoriously sketchy. Notoriously bad, yeah. The one that got me was the lady saying what they were wearing, and then yeah, it turns out that's what they were wearing. Uh, so, uh, so people think that this is a big conspiracy to cover up the girl's abduction into sex trafficking by like the whole town, by the by the people that saw them, by the people that photoshopped. I don't know. I think if you're going to sex traffic someone, you grab them and you don't worry about bringing their phones out in the woods and making calls from what i know about sex trafficking it is very you do not draw attention to anything like people just disappear and there's never a trace of them again uh one of the things that i kind of believe is that somebody said what if the girls went to that point it took the hours or however many hours it took they came back to town and they ran into maybe like two other people or, or the girls are like, oh, we'll take you up there and show you how to get up there. And then those guys did something to the girls that maybe the girls managed to come back and revisit town before going back up the trail again. But that just doesn't make a lot of sense. Would they have enough time to do that? I don't know. I don't think so. But the fact that these people said they saw the girls in town when they were supposedly up at the, the head of the trail... I don't know. If there was cell reception in the town, though, I think that there would have been... Their phones would have yeah. pinged off of yeah. something that would have yeah. told them yep. the authorities yeah. that they had gone back yeah. to town. I think this is most likely. I don't think that most people happen. mistaking the date that they saw the girls, but it's still odd to me. But it sounds like it was also a very touristy town, and yeah. there could have been two other girls. Oh, exactly. Who sort of exactly. fit their description. Exactly. But that's that's theory number five: sex trafficking. And lastly, theory number six: a local indigenous group. Uh, somebody posted. I didn't put the person's name. Somebody posted in an article on Reddit. I had been following this case from the onset until all of a sudden several pieces of evidence started showing up from searches or random walks by indigenous folks. To me, this coincided with the rumors from several Panamanian locals that a small indi- indigenous... <laughs> I just have such a hard time with words today. That a small indigenous group was involved. Whether this is solely an urban legend or not, several locals believe that this small group of indigenous people is called Los Caneos or the Rabbits, and they have either underground caves or underground dwellings or small dugouts that they live in are linked to the missing girls. These folks get sustenance from jungle plants, wild animals, and stray pigs, cattle, or domestic animals from distant farms. They are also rumored to be cannibals if need be. If you study the case, you will find that some of the girls' effects were found near other animal remains such as cattle and pig. Of course, this would be unpopular for the tourist trade, so this is quickly covered up or dismissed as a loony legend. Yet, if you ask a local indi- indigenous person about the Los Ca- the lo- uh, wow. yet if you ask a local indigenous person about the Los Caneos, they get very alarmed, fearful, and quiet. You can see the fear in their eyes. Huh. I don't know if this is merely superstition or right. something with substance. These Caneo folks only come out at night to forage. They are seldom, if ever, witnessed by anyone in daylight. So that's the cannibal theory that the girls were eaten by a cannibalistic tribe of indigenous people. Wouldn't explain people. why the bones were 
basically bleached. Though. No, no. And you would think that they would show more signs of trauma on the bones yeah. that the girls were. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't like that explanation. So that's that. That now we get to what do you think? What do you Ugh. think happened to these girls? I mean, I, I I'm really torn on this one because there is a lot of really suspicious stuff. So this is what I was thinking all along. So for like the whole thing until you got to the theories, I'm thinking they just got lost. Yeah. And a series of unfortunate events. Yeah. I mean, I, that using Occam's razor, that is the yes. most likely explanation. I do. I think all of the behavioral things that are kind of weird can totally be explained just by confusion, yeah. exhaustion, yeah. panic. But like the bones bother me and that missing photo bothers me and the fact that the backpack was in pristine condition but everything else was scattered yeah. like the like the forensic stuff bothers me their yeah. behavior to me it's all explainable the behavior is because i i have never been lost i mean i was you know my trail that i walk on in the woods i got lost once one of the first times i was out there but that's you know it, no matter what direction i walk for a while i'm gonna hit a road or i'm right, gonna hit somebody's trail. yard it's a trail yeah so i have i i have no frame of reference for what it's like to get lost in a jungle or a big woods people do irrational things yeah. there's a part they of were me, wildly unprepared it sounds dumb but there's a part of me that would like to get lost just so i know how i would react in that situation mm. because i'm weird about stuff like that like situations where i shouldn't be stressed. I'm stressed in like big situations. I'm calm. Huh. So I, I, I want to know for myself what I would be like if I was lost. I mean, I could see these girls panicking like crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, and they I could see them not in, making rational decisions. Right. They went in there really unprepared. Yeah. So that tells me they didn't have a lot of knowledge or skills when it came to that sort they of didn't. thing. They it, didn't. From what I read, they had very little hiking skills and i could just see them getting out there panicking yeah. okay now you're a couple days without food and apparently they had water but nobody tested it to make sure it was good so yeah. i just think all the behavioral stuff not taking uh, video not sending text mess that's just all yeah i think that's 100 percent explainable yeah it's the weird stuff that i don't yep. that i can't explain and up until you started talking about that tour guide I thought, oh, totally innocent, just an accident. But that's, I think that's suspicious. Yeah, there's, there's too many. There's too yeah. many actually reasonable explanations there now. Are. All the trafficking, that all could possibly. I mean, people disappear all the time. But there, I, I see a lot of stuff about the photos. But people, I put a photo. I think, I think in your read thing. Too much into them. There's a photo in your thing where it's a photo. It's like a, a blurrier kind of photo where it's. Chris Kramer's off in the distance, they, off in the distance turn towards the camera photo. and people say in that photo they she believe looks like she looks tied. scared she looks like her hands are tied behind her back but why would she take a people photo say that? that she looks like she has blood on her I think that's just shadows but she looks weird in it that is photo. weird she's and there's another over photo funny. I think I put in yours called red rock where when there's a rock where if you open that picture there's a certain rock where it looks like it has blood stains or it has red on it like I'm still looking at the photo of her. Every time I look at that, she looks like her hands are behind her she back. She looks like her hands are, really are tied behind her back. And people say she looks frightened. She's not She smiling. doesn't look like herself. And I believe I can't get a, I couldn't get like a solid answer, but I think that's the last photo in the okay. photo series from the daytime photos. So what about the picture on? There's one called Red Rock or, or, where there's a rock the f- in the middle that oh, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. people think has blood on it. And they wonder if that's where, if something happened to... To Chris, if that's where she hit her head. But it, you would think that if Lizanne was taking a picture of the blood on the rock, she would get a better close-up of it. I think that's just a scenery I just think photo. it's a pretty waterfall, but and she people, took a photo of it. People have blown up the photos. People have blown them up to the fact, you know, to where they're pixelated. Yeah. In, that, in one of the photos, I think it's the one where they say that you can see her body. Mm. People say they can see, like, a image of a man wearing a hat. Oh, geez. But it's just obvious pixelation to me that yeah. people are, are blowing these up. And and I don't think that's her body in that picture where no. people believe that that's a picture of uh, uh, Chris Kramer's body at the bottom of the ravine. I don't think it is. I don't think so either. But people are putting a lot of stock. The, the one photo that I think is weird is that one with her looking back at the camera. It is Looking strange. like her hands are behind her back. And she's got like a weird look on her face. Yeah, she, she doesn't look like she's But smiling. people say at this point, they might have realized like, uh-oh. Well, people think that this might be around the point where they realized they were really lost. I don't know. It's weird. It but is a weird photo. But then people said, why didn't they take photos those days between 
there were like four or five days where there was no photos. You would think that they would still take photos to maybe recognize places they've been. Unless you're not thinking straight. No, because people said that that, uh, that camera had a really good battery. There was still like a super big charge on the battery. So maybe they didn't realize that, but they probably weren't thinking clearly. No. I mean, I, I, do you think they were killed? The, the bones bother me. Yeah. I don't understand why their bones were in such wildly different condition. They were found right by each other. Why would one appear to be bleached and the other still have like meat tissue? On them? Yeah, meat was like a horrible <laughs> Let's not word. Say the meat and the article meat. said meat, and that's a horrible word. They still word. have tissue on them. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense no. to me. No. If it were an accident, how would that happen? Yeah. That's the one thing that, and the photo that's missing. Those two things really stick in my craw. Like I can't explain yeah. how that and would happen. A lot happen of people naturally. say with the search party out, they should have come across the girls. Like I couldn't get a idea, I couldn't get a grasp of how big there or how. I mean, this is a dense jungle. You can't hear yeah. a lot. It, it absorbs right. sound. Right. I do also think that someone being with them explains a lot of the behavior with yeah. the phones. Yeah, and stuff. it does. It totally explains a lot of behavior. Like they're just trying to sneak a phone call yeah. to nine one one when whoever it is isn't looking or yeah. yep whatever. And I that, don't think it's someone using their phones to make it look like they were trying to call 911. I think they try, were really yeah. trying. Yep. I don't know. I, I don't know what I think. It could have just been I, an accident, but the I bones could really see, bother me. I could see Kremers trying the monkey bridge, falling, injuring herself, and the two of them trying to get out. And at some point, Kremers passes away, whether from dehydration or whatever. And... uh Froon, or from her head injury yeah and maybe lizanne's trying to get out and she twists her ankle or hurts her ankle and just ends up so succumbing to doesn't explain the bones being bleached though. no it doesn't it doesn't i maybe I can that's even just set the photo thing aside maybe that's just a random weird thing that happened people said that How, for though? the amount of time they were out there there should have they should not have been their bones should not have been that bare that they were not out there that long for that much decomposition to happen. They said that that's fishy. But when animals do that? It, it, I don't know. People said that not in that amount of time, they would not get cleaned that well. But the bones showed no sign of... Of animals. So of. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I want to say that they were lost and died, but I can't 100% say no, that I because there's either. a lot of suspicious things that I don't know if... I attribute it to a third party killing them or I attribute it to them being in a panicked state and not knowing what they're doing or what to do. I don't know. I Either I way. I think that your second explains 95%. Yeah. yeah. It's the damn bones. Yeah. <laughs> that really bothers either, me. Either way, I, hate, I need a scientist to weigh in on I that. Hate How is that possible? About what happened to them. I hate yeah. thinking about Lizanne maybe breaking her ankle or twisting her ankle and laying there and knowing that that was it. She's going to die out there. But at that point, you think you would still leave some kind of message. That's That bothers me more than anything. Weren't is their that, phones dead at that point, though? Yeah, but the camera wasn't. The camera could shoot the video. Camera. The camera shoot... You know, I saw examples of what, like, video the camera would shoot, and it shoots maybe great video. she didn't video. have it anymore, though. She did. It was in her backpack. But, Unless she had dropped her backpack right. along the way. That's possible. Yeah. And a lot of people if they were make, running or something. Yeah, a lot of people make a thing about the bras, but I totally nah. don't see that as being an issue. They were uncomfortable. They were lost. And like I said, at that point, someone seeing them without a bra on was the absolute Here's least the thing, of their problems. That doesn't mean they weren't wearing bras. It just means that they had an no, extra No, those were set. the only bras that they had. How do because you know that? you can see in the pictures, in some of the pictures, you can see parts of their bra, and you can see that those are the actual oh, bras are they? Okay. that were packed in the backpack. Okay. Like one of them has a floral pattern, and you can see that it's the same pattern as the bras in the backpack. Okay. So at some point, they took them oh, off, yeah, but that you, is you're going to want to be comfortable. And people said maybe uh, Chris Kramer's jeans got wet, and you don't want to be walking around in wet jeans because it's going to chafe. Mm -hmm. So she maybe took them off, and they dropped in the river. Right. Uh, we're never going to know. Maybe she think. wanted to go swimming and didn't yeah. want to get her shorts yeah. wet. Yeah. We're never going to know, I think, what happened to these girls. I think, like I said, 95% of it sounds like just a for unfortunate <laughs> series of, of events. That 5% bugs you. Yeah, it's the bones. I just don't know how you can explain them being found so close together in such completely different condition. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I don't, I don't buy any of the photoshopping stuff. I don't no. buy that this was some kind of elaborate cover up. I just don't buy any of that. No. It's like Occam's razor. Yeah. 
in my opinion. I I if I can't I, say either way though. If I was held at gunpoint and forced to choose, I think they got lost. And me too. I think one or the both of them got hurt, and I think they ended up dying just out there. Yeah, and I I feel like there's probably a scientific explanation for the bone situation, but nobody really looked too hard into this, yeah. so there's nobody no. to speak to that. No. I feel bad for their families. I feel bad for everybody involved. I, because I cannot to imagine. never have an answer. No, no. And her parents are convinced that it was foul play. Foul play, but I think that's human nature to be oh, yeah. convinced that it wasn't my daughter's bad bad decision. It was somebody <laughs> yeah, right. killed her. But I, I there's just so much that itches at me that I can't mm. scratch enough. That know. you know, there's there's stuff that bothers me that I I could see it being a murder situation, mm-hmm. but. If I had to pick one, I think they got lost and and injured and died. Yeah. And it sucks because I hate thinking of their last moments. Like I said, the, the from the outside looking in, it seems like a bunch of crazy, wild circumstances. Yeah. But yeah. that's what happens yeah. when you're panicking yep. and over a series of days. And it just... What makes it really bad is that it's like Elisa Lamb where I don't think we're ever going to know. I don't think we're ever going to know what, what truly happened. Right. Oh, Lisa Lamb, that's another weird one. <laughs> so that is the story of Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon. What do you guys think? Were they murdered? Was it just a case of getting lost and dying? What do you guys think happened? Yeah. Let yeah. us know. I'm really excited to hear what people yep. think. Uh, Shane pointed out that we forgot, a, or no, not Shane, uh, <gasps> Jamie pointed out we forgot a pickle joke. Did we last, last yes, time? we did. Jamie pointed it out, and I was like, oh crap, we totally forgot a pickle I joke. Can't so it. Krista is coming with our pickle joke. Yeah, I think you well, read the I last look one. up our listener question. Oh, Jesus. This is another winner. (laughs) Hey, Tom, you've got a pickle in your ear. What'd you say? (laughs) I said you've got, you'll have to speak louder. I've got a pickle in my ear. Wow. I'm not sure how that's a joke. I don't get it. (laughs) It's more like (laughs) a... It's very dumb. Yes. Um, Oh, geez. This one's slightly better. Why did the pickle climb the ladder to the roof? Why? Why? He heard the meal was on the house. <laughs> okay, that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> oh, okay. Today's but um l- today's listener question is from Bridget. Ooh, hey Bridget. Bridget left us a really nice voicemail Can't message for our fiftieth. Um, she asks. Oh, we got a voicemail from uh, Dash also. Okay. Cool. Uh, asking about if we updated the blue whale story, but we can Ooh, we'll we play will. his we'll play his we're uh, gonna get to that right yeah we'll play his voicemail when we do update okay. the story awesome her question Bridges question is if budget was unlimited which famous paranormal or strange site would you like to visit to see in person oh, really I have to think super hard about that hmm do you have an answer in mind already I I know? really want to see the Queen Mary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, the, boat. The, the boat that's supposed to be haunted. The first thing that came to my mind was the Winchester house because, A, I just think I would love the architecture because yeah. that's, like, yeah. amazing. Yep. Um, but that's... It makes me want to go to some castle in, like, Germany or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or Romania. Yeah. I mean, we have unlimited budget. Let's and I'm go just to going to... I'm going to the Queen Mary. That's Vlad the Impaler's castle, castle in Romania. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, ultimate, I'd want to go someplace like that's thousands of years old, like something really cool like that. But. I would say Queen Mary for like a local one, but if I if I, I kind of want to see the Suicide Forest, I kind of want to. Yeah, me too. I kind of want to see what I think of that. I yeah. don't want to venture too oh, far into too much it. Too to choose from. But I kind of do want to see the Suicide Forest. Yeah, we won't go in too far. No. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a really good one. That yeah. and like an old castle. Yeah. But Winchester, if we're talking like United States. I mean, I'd like to get to Roswell. I'd like to get down to Roswell yeah. and see, see. See, there's too many. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> when, when we are rich, we'll put together our itinerary. Give us a multiple choice next time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with Suicide Forest because I kind of want to see that. Yeah. I'd like to know what our strangers think. Yeah. Where, where your, would you guys go? We'll post it on the yep. Facebook page. Yep. It won't be multiple choice, by the no. way. No. Because <laughs> we want suggestions. So, so I think we're gonna wrap it up tonight. So here are a lot of people the deets. in our, a lot of people like our deets answer our deets for what we say at the end of the episode, which I think is cute because it it's cute. technically true. Our deets are: if you want to email us, we are at thestrangesessions at gmail dot com. Oh, we got a really good um, email from 
Did you respond to that guy? Yes. Sorry, that, dude. That was... Uh, <laughs> He's a Chris, truck driver. Chris is not real good with names. No, I'm terrible. <laughs> that was uh, Nick. Nick okay. is a truck driver and yes. he loves listening to our podcast. So that's awesome. He I'm, says it keeps him occupied I on like, the road. I like the so. fact that we... And did he give us a suggestion too? I thought he had an episode suggestion. He did. He did. But that is one that we are going to talk about. That was already on my list. Okay. Uh, so we're giving him a shout out right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, I I like the fact that he's driving in his truck listening to us. Yeah, me too. Did somebody else him. ask for like a super special shout out? Did we give them that? I feel like we got a message from somebody where they were like, I need a shout out. Did we give them if a not, shout out? If not, we will give you one in the next episode. Oh my because God, yeah, I don't I'm so sorry. <laughs> we got to get better with uh, jotting down these things as they happen. We need an intern. <laughs> need an intern. <laughs> Corey, Corey, we need you here. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have a Twitter at Strange Session without the last S, which is annoying. We are an Instagram. Krista does a very good job on Instagram at the Strange Sessions. And if you want to send us snail mail, you can reach us at. I just forgot. I have to repay for Ooh, the PO box. Better do that. Yes, I better. <laughs> if you want to send us something, you can send it to the Strange Sessions, PO Box four thirty four. Manitowoc, Wisconsin, 54221-0434. And you can call our phone number, the Strange Sessions Hotline, with a three-minute or less message at 920-443-9602. And of course, if you're on Facebook, join, join the, the strangers. strangers. If you're not, make up a... Fake uh, account, yeah, like just, Krista kind of has. Just to join this. Yeah, I'm Krista Doe. Yeah. Feel free to friend me. Yep. There's nothing, you're not going to get any personal information any personal about me beats. on there, but um, I'm basically just on there for the yeah. podcast, so. So I think that's it from us for everything. today. Yeah. So episode 48 is in the books. Oh, crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do for the next episode. Is there a topic you want to do? We'll talk about it well, after. Yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about it after. <laughs> we'll discuss that offline. <laughs> <laughs> so from Krista and I from the Old School Media Studio, until next time, stay, stay strange. strange. This has been an Old School Media production, executive produced by Kirk Konechny. For more information and content, please visit strangesessions.com.